What's up? It's Friday. Hallelujah. What's going on, everyone? It's Mac. Dubs. And AJ. And it's Kickback Friday. Absolutely. And I don't know what the heck is going on. This is just uh, weird. Nothing's like working. No. Dude, the background is glitching so bad. For you or mine? Yours. It's yeah. Like a vortex. Now what? It's like you're in a vortex. Yeah, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to fix that right quick. So, Mac, how was your week? Well, I already know, but I'm sure the fan, the fans and the viewers don't. Mm. It's all right. What are you doing? I was uh, fixing my background, and apparently nobody else can see us. Can people see us? I don't know. We're live. Yeah, no shit, but I'm, uh, all right, hold on, let me try something here. There we go, there we are, we're back. On my end, it wasn't showing that we were, uh, in camera. There we go. What'd you do, blur out your background? I did, I did. It still looks like you're on a vortex glitch. And you sound like you're uh, it's, like it's like whenever you move, it's like. See, on my end, it's not doing that. It's like whenever you move, it's just like real. I don't know. It's like. There, glitchy. is that better, asshole? Um, I guess. Bro, I have no background on. Now, this says, uh, stream this to your audience. I'm almost for certain we are live. We are live. It says right. it right here in the left-hand corner, live. Yeah, no shit. But on my side, uh, on my end, uh, above us, it says, Friday Night Kickback with featured guest, Bay Chubby Dudley Ragney, which apparently I, uh, it was uh, a uh, spelling error or fucking autocorrect here. And then next to that, it says, stream this to your audience. Let me blow this up here. There we go. Oh, stream it to your audience. Bro, I feel like we are in a shit show right now. Hold on, let's see what this does now. Stream this to your... Add destination. I'm almost for certain I set all this shit up before the show. Uh, no? I mean, you did. I can check. Go to YouTube. Uh, YouTube channel. I'll find out. Yeah, we are live. And we are on our channel. Alright, well, if it's saying we are live, then I'm not worried about it. Probably miscalculation on my part. It happens. Uh, what do you expect, dude? We can't always have a perfect show. No. You know, it's, uh... What do we have on the menu tonight? Mac, is there any announcements that we have for everybody here? Um, yes. Uh, Monday, 3.15. Um, I will do 
A quick video of a lottery pick for the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, and then post that on um, the channel. You know, it would be really cool if we could get the first and last pick. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, that would be that would be great. Uh, looks like we have a viewer. Person. Hey, nice. Yeah. Go ahead and say hi. Uh, you so choose. Or don't. Yeah, just sit and watch and be a free person. Or, or, or leave. Yeah, that too. Or come back and if you uh if you want to say hi, just yell at your TV or your phone. I'm just, I'm, I'm almost really certain that uh we won't hear you. <laughs> if you watch this from home, are you watching on your TV? <laughs> Still pick up your phone or whatever device that uh you have. Please go to the YouTube channel. And type click, it on the, click on the live and then post in the comments. Mm -hmm. Hello. Work. Um, I wish that uh, I wish you could say hello to the TV screen and it would just come right to us, but mm -hmm. you know, it can't. So, so as I've already leaked, I'm, I'm out. sorry for that. Since I've already leaked it out there, tonight's show is going to be extreme with the original, or the ECW original, Chubby Dudley. And I'm this working on... The second episode with Chubby. The first episode is on our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, you can go check it out at First and Last Hit Podcast. And go check us out on um, Pod News. Five star rating. Let's go. Yeah, you know, you know what, dude? We got to get better on uh, on uh, advertising. Everybody, go check us out on all the other platforms. I keep forgetting about that. I do want to say though that um. Oh, by the way, my my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. But hey, look, if you want to call in tonight and say hello to the one. The only, uh, the cake, old, chub, old chubby, then uh, the number is 910-292-9904. That is our call-in number for tonight, and we will post it here in the comments. So other than that, I'm going to actually... Uh... Send the link to him if I can. Uh, am I still visible? Probably not. You are. Oh, nice. Okay. Hmm. Whoops. Nine one zero two nine two nine nine zero four. Oh my gosh. Two nine two nine nine zero four. Well, I'm having got that taken care of. I mean, hey, look. Uh, you know, I was on my uh I was on to something here, and I uh, completely forgot what the hell I was going on about. Um, yeah, everybody, come on in. And say hi to uh, to Chubby. You know, you guys got any questions, please ask away. Maybe we can find out about Johnny tonight. You know, the last – you know, and I can't figure – but I'm going to have to have you send the link in Messenger because apparently I don't know uh, my Facebook password. Embarrassing to say, yes, I know. 
However, at the same time, I have that auto login where as soon as I click on the thing, it finds me. Um, yeah, no, last I heard, he was, uh, I mean, I, I guess he's alive. And he's right. just I suppose probably run into is that uh, he just likes talking about ECW stuff. We'll hear more from uh, Bay about that. <laughs> What? He just uh, texted me and said, I need the link to join in. I tried to send it to him, but... Uh, I got it. Cool, thank you. The love of God, I hope he gives everybody a surprise. I've been working on something special for everybody, and... Uh, I'm hoping that this will actually work out. So let's see. And uh, what? I can't. That no, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. All right. Well, what's the surprise? I mean, if I told you, I'd be telling everybody else. There wouldn't be a surprise. Hmm. Well, whatever floats your boat. Should be joining in in any second. Hey, you know what? The last time how I got him to come in the show was uh, saying it's getting a little weird in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, boom, he just pops up and he's like, how weird is it now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it just got a little weirder. Hey, when he comes in, I'm going to be like, hey, look, folks, it just got weird again. You know, I, I get excited when our guests like to uh, stay in touch with us and, you know, things like that. It really does my heart good. The battery, yeah. on, uh, the battery on the PC sucks, though. I feel like this battery gets drained so quick anymore. On what, the uh, Mac? Oh, yeah. Seems like it goes so quick anymore. I mean, do you use it frequently or? Uh, I mean, well, Mark said that uh, by having uh, a charge it to about 80%. If you charge it fully to 100, it's going to, uh, battery doesn't last as long. Um, so I Why that. charge it to 80%? Because by, uh, I don't know, I guess it's supposed to extend the battery life or something. I don't know. And he's usually really, like, he's very, very high tech. He knows he knows quite a bit. Um, I was going to say charge it to 81%. You would. You would. I would. I would. I really would. I just, I, I don't understand. I, I feel like I haven't used it very long. And it just sucks the battery dry. Mm. It is. It is I like. It, it, I like my. I like this laptop. I mean, it's done me. It's done my duty. But I mean. Like I mean, I the battery did uh, suck harder than the battery did suck harder than Doofy did uh, in Scary Movie One by the Hoover. <laughs> you, you know what I mean, like. Oh man. Cheers. Hassle talk. Cheers. Echna Mashito. Speaking of all this foreign talk. Uh, <laughs> dude, we better be getting monetized tonight. Ah, uh, let's not worry about that right now. Let's very about having a good time on the show. Oh, for sure. Now, I'm hoping the only reason he's taking so long is because... Uh, uh, he just texted me. He said he'll be right here. He went to go grab some cake. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like you're bullshitting me.
That would be pretty cool, though, if he did. I can't believe that autocorrect did his name wrong, so go back and fix that. You couldn't have just told me that? Well, I mean, I don't like putting... I don't like blasting people like that. Do you think it's wrapped in barbed wire? Huh? Do you think it's wrapped in barbed wire? Do you remind him of the ACP days? What's wrapped in barbed wire? The toilet seat? <laughs> yeah. Sit on that shit. That'll bring you back to the old ECW days. I thought you asked if I thought you asked if his pipe was in Bob Wire. I'm like, that's uh, too personal, there, dude. No, the, the text that I received, I was and you did, and of course you had to throw his business out there anyway. Um, but uh, oh, bull, bull crap! I did not. I sent you the text. And I was replying on air to your message. I asked if it was wrapped in barbed wire to remind him of the ECW days. And you said, uh, what, the toilet seat? So you guys uh, have explained to do now. Uh, like I said, it's just getting, it just got weird. Weird is putting it very mild, dude. I feel awkward. Well, yeah, you made it that way, so. How the hell did I make it that way? Because you're the one that asked that. I wonder if it's wrapped in barbed wire. I'm like, and it just got weird. Hey, how are you doing? It just got weird. For the love of God, it just got weird again. <laughs> Let me center myself here. There we go. What's up, well, brother? How are you? Good. How What's going on, guys? How you doing, Bay? Uh, right. Talking about uh, wrapping our toilet seats up in Bob Wide to remind us of uh, watching ECW back in the day. That's definitely something I would not do. I would not <laughs> put barbed wire, especially on my toilet seat. <laughs> you had to. You just had to bend there to. <laughs> Uh, what you yeah, sipping on tonight? A uh, little Cabernet. Nice, nice. How about you? I see you got a little. See you got a beer going over there. Uh, I got a Samuel Adams and uh, a little Chardonnay. Nice, double fist in it. That's how I roll. Yeah. yeah. So, Mac, at least he'll be able to go back and rewatch, and then he'll just see uh, how it. <laughs> So I'll be waiting for that reaction for sure. Hey, that that's where the fun happens. It's where the magic oh, gets. Of course. Um, they, I did want to ask. Oh, um, so you realize now that uh, we are officially in trouble for false advertising. <laughs> Wait, what, what do you mean? Well, I had advertised that uh, old Chubby Dudley was going to be on the show tonight and he was going to be eating a snack. Oh, old Chubby Dudley has a cookie. I'm letting my stomach rest and breathe. Uh, I just got done my dinner. Nice. So, nice. and then uh, it was on the the barbed wire hopper, and uh, here we go. <laughs> oh. So, what's right. going on? Come on, talk to me. What's what's the what's the deal? Well, we were uh, we, we just realized that uh, we were going over your favorite snacks. Uh, back in the old ECW days, and to keep yourself reminded that every so often you throw back a few uh, a, a few thumbtacks to uh, remind yourself of the pain you used to go through back in the day. <laughs> Did I ever? I don't think I ever ever had to deal with thumbtacks. Oh, just chairs and tables. Oh, okay. Oh, well, being from Jefferson, chairs, tables. chairs, tables, couple canes. Oh, damn, my light fell. Hang on a second. couple canes. Yeah, all right. You know, bats, frying pans. A lot of frying pans. My, that was mom, when... almost, my mom almost hit me in the face with a frying pan once. Yeah. I was about 15 years old. And that was just because I brought a dog in the house. See yeah. that? 
Let's see. On my job, I can tell you what I've gotten hit by on my job. Light post, um, a fence. Um, I've fallen off the back of the truck <laughs> because some idiot forgot to press the lever down. Um, let's see. Um, so you're hardcore is what you're saying. Pretty much. Well, in a different way than Matt, the rest tell of them, them, but yes. You know, always, tell them the truth, though. You always had something soft to fall on. That's yeah, it's uh, called your uh, stomach. Well, called my what? Your stomach. All oh, I mean, all, all that cushion. I mean, I'm almost for certain you didn't hurt yourself too bad. <laughs> Please, I've had to go to see the dentist and everything. <laughs> but anyways, anyways. Oh, so what's been going on with you? Well, anything new? Uh, non-stop. Non-freaking-stop. The the whole, uh, it's kind of crazy. Like, the whole Chubby Dudley thing, like, I feel like I'm more popular now, 30 years later, really? than I was. Yeah, it's, like, really, um, taken off. It's crazy. Like, the, the channel's doing good. My Facebook page is blow, blowing up. It's, um... It's interesting. It's it's weird because it's like just so shocking and, and it's cool. Like people are really wanting to know about like old school ECW. There's like a huge, huge just interest in it. And I, with my um reaction channel, you know, I was doing yeah. the reaction videos, which I'm doing, I'm still doing, but then I added um interviews to it and I'm doing I'm like going through and I'm interviewing the old eastern championship wrestling guys and people are like going nuts for it so and awesome. the cool thing is that the guys that i've interviewed so far the eastern championship uh wrestling peeps you know a few of them nobody's even heard from in the last 30 years and those guys are just so happy and appreciative and shocked and they're having a ball and we've reconnected all over again and um, old friend, re, uh, friendships have been re, reborn, and it's been it's so much fun. Like just, man, it's, it's it's time to get a cookout going. Then I mean, uh, yeah, we're I think we're going to do definitely going to end up doing something. I think we should do something somewhere with the fans or something like a big meet and greet, like whole little hangout party or something. That would be uh, pretty cool. That would actually be very interesting. I mean. You know, it, it'd be educational too. You I'm gonna eat my cookie now, so I hope you're happy, Andrew. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I think that'd be really cool. You know, everybody, you know, get the fans here, you know, to meet you guys, and you know, the story time with Johnny, hearing about the Phoenix Times, and <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, I remember reaching out to you, but how is he doing? You know, we've been kind of worried, haven't heard from him in a bit, and. And I starting to think it's because Cameron probably pissed him off, letting him know that we're not in the go we're not in the Phoenix Times anymore. We're in the Gopher Times. Oh my um, God. you're gonna blame me. I, I I mean honestly we, we um it's a week ago? It was a week ago we were texting and it just you know it, it never came up. We were talking about other ECW things that were popping up and um yeah, so I mean, he's he's fine. So I don't know what happened. Maybe circle back and ask him again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, no, so man, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let I'll let Mac take this one because I have to ask every guest now since they come on the show uh, their views on the goal for time. So Mac, you want to take it away? Oh, uh, wait. What? Uh, we'll ask him about the goal for times in a minute. But I do want to get to this though. Uh, I was on one. I was um, watching one of your shows, and I commented. Um, it was about the getting the banner up in the arena, and uh, I'm glad you I, agree, that I agree a thousand percent. Uh, I grew up watching you guys um, back in that. Day. I don't know a lot, but I remember y'all's names. I remember a lot of matches with 
uh, Johnny, um, and I told him about that on our last show. Um, but I, I, I'm totally behind that banner. Uh, you send a petition my way, and you got my signature. Here, here, here's the thing: the the ECW arena is and became an iconic um, wrestling arena, not just in Philadelphia, but it was known worldwide. It, it became truly legendary. And number one, first off, the person who found the building and hooked it up with Todd was Johnny Hotbody, okay? So if it wasn't for Hotbody, that building never would have happened. Also, too, in Philadelphia wrestling history, there was five guys, okay? If it wasn't for these five guys... That whole hardcore style wouldn't have become famous and built that Philadelphia wrestling scene. Those five guys laid the fucking groundwork for hardcore yeah. wrestling in Philadelphia, and they built the town, in my opinion. They built the town of Philadelphia for prof professional wrestling for the independents. And those five guys deserve fucking respect. They deserve to be honored. They deserve it. They busted their fucking ass they were throwing each other off of balconies they were using bats they were using chairs they they were using it all before extreme five years before yeah. extreme so because there was no arena for them they were doing it at temple university or the civic center or other buildings that the promoter Joel Goodhart was running for the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance. But the TWA and Joel Goodhart made that all happen with four <laughs> workers. And it was two bloodbath iconic feuds that went on for a couple years each. And that was Johnny Hotbody versus Tony Stetson and yep. Larry Winters versus DC Drake. Those four guys had two legendary feuds that put Philadelphia wrestling, hardcore wrestling, on the map and built the whole fan base to what became Eastern Championship Wrestling and then Extreme Championship Wrestling. So I, it, it's like a no fucking brainer. Let's honor these guys and put a banner up in the fucking arena and honor them. Because every person that walks in that arena to whether they're watching MLW or Battleground Championship Wrestling or any other promotion that's going to go try to run in that building and try to recreate that ECW magic, all those fans that walk through that door, they deserve to look up and re be reminded of who helped build the scene of wrestling in Philadelphia. It's like uh, it's like, uh, what is that? The uh, I can't think of well, all, uh, things like uh, the president, uh, they got like they're carved in the uh, in the mountain there, that's what they should have in that arena for those Mount guys. Rushmore. Yes, Mount Rushmore. There we go. Well, Bay, I want to ask you something. In, uh, and, and it's actually two questions. So one I'll ask now and then um, try to get Mag to uh, get your thoughts on this question. I have to ask every guest. So my first question is, what was with all the heat with um, Jerry Lawler? Uh, and I was that just uh, was that legitimate heat with him going at and attacking the uh, ECW originals and how they didn't do real wrestling and they wrestled in a bingo hall and all this. Uh, I don't know if you remember it at the time. Uh, he, he he really when he was advertised or not advertised, when he was con can't speak tonight. When he would be on commentary, he would really dog the ECW. Uh, originals and just the ECW as a whole uh, for wrestling and bingo halls and, and not being wrestling. Okay, so at that point, I was already gone from ECW, and I was kind of like not. I I, I I with ECW, it was like I fell in love and fell out of love. It was like I went through. It was like a bitter, bad relationship. Like we had our great moments and we had our bad moments, and during those bad moments, like. I felt so, so jilted and betrayed because I did 
I, I I gave so much to that company and I loved it so much. And then I felt like a betrayed lover. So I like kind of turned my back and I couldn't watch it because it just hurt so bad. So at that time, I really wasn't watching, but I was hearing, you know, tidbits here and there. So I'm guessing it was a little of both. Um, I, I think as a whole, you know, at that time, a lot of the, the WWF at the time or the WCW higher ups and big wigs and the, the big names in the business look down on ECW because of our style that we were working, the, the extreme, the recklessness, the craziness. Um, and, and they just didn't really think that was wrestling to a point. You know what I mean? Especially a guy like Lawler, who was a true old school guy. And he, he I mean, he was the king. He was the true king of wrestling. And he was uh, a guy that drew a lot of money over the years and big crowds and amazing angles. So I think a lot of it was probably his true feelings. But also, too, you know, it was to get the whole angle over as well. So I think it was a mixture of both, but I'm sure there was some type of respect there as well for what we were doing for the business. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get you on the show. Uh, back in, I think it was like January. Uh, and, and, and you had done a show the, in the, the week of January, like 20th to 26th, something like that. But uh, I remember watching one of your shows in, and I think it was the day before. I think it was like January 25th or something like that. I was on there. And I can't remember. It must have been an interview or something. Um, but now that we got you on the show, and I know it's a little late. But I want to throw out a big happy birthday to uh, Big Dick Dudley. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate what happened. But uh, he, had, you know, his birthday was, I believe, January 26th. And yeah, I, I, and I, and I was telling Mac about it too. I said I was really hoping to get him on the show, uh, you know, around that time, and you know, you know, really honor, you know, Big Dick Dudley and all that stuff. Um, but it, one of you know, uh, a quick Big Dick story. It might have been like one of my. It was definitely one of my first weekends. I don't think it was my first, but it was one of my first two or three weekends in back in ECW as a Dudley. And, um, you know, after the, the shows, you would go back to the travel lodge. If you, if you were, weren't told to stay at the arena, that your promo was going to be filmed. Because what would happen is after, after the arena show was over, then they would film the promos for TV for the next three weeks. So Paul would either, he would film so many back at the arena throughout the arena, wherever he was in Dort, in the parking lot or wherever. Or he would go back to the travel lodge and we would film them at the travel lodge in one of the rooms. So you would have to wait and see like where he told you to go. So at that particular time, we went back to um, the travel lodge. And we were still in our gimmicks because we were waiting to do the, the fucking promos. And there was times like you, you would film promos all night long. So there was times like you would be up all night partying until 2, 3, sometimes 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning waiting to do your promo. And um, so one of the first weekends, it was uh, back at the travel lodge. And Dick was, uh, he was fired up drunk. Fired up drunk. He was out of control. And um, he was, he just like was throwing people around the travel lodge. Like anybody that got in our way, he would like just grab them and throw them and give that growl like you saw on TV. And he, and he would like turn to you. So he'd be like, grab somebody. Like I, we were like, I remember like I can still picture the stairway. Like he pushed somebody like down a half flight of steps, and then he would turn at you and go. Arr! And then he would come up to you, just look, work the gimmick, brother, work the gimmick. <laughs> it was just, it was like Jekyll and Hyde. It was so funny, but it, it was just like it was crazy because you didn't know what to expect. Like he was just, he was a big boy and as strong as fuck, and he would just throw people around and not think twice about it. 
so uh, has there ever been a time where your gimmick being out or off air um, where like in these type of moments where you guys were still in character, has there ever been a time where a Dudley would be incapacitated? It's my favorite a favorite thing about your character. And in off air, you would still work the gimmick and, and flee from the scene. I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. So, so you're keeping kayfabe. Okay. When, when, when you're off air, you're not in the ring or whatever. If you were still in character, if there was ever a cha- if there was ever a time where you guys were all together and uh, something happened to one of the Dudleys, mm-hmm. would you still work your character and and run uh, from from the scene, whereas in your character you would? I. Leave- that, okay, I, I can say there was multiple times um, where situations arise, and it didn't matter who it was. I think mean, if it was a Dudley or not, where you know, like some some of the fans would they weren't true. Some of the untrue fans, I'll say, that would like come back to Travel Lodge and hang out and get drunk, and then they would like try to start fights with some of the boys like oh you think you're extreme and they would try to start shit like we would all band together and we all had each other's back like it it didn't matter who it was Dudley or not it could have been somebody who that we were working an angle against it at that point like you're going to attack one you're attacking all of us so we we all had each other's back like that I mean, you see that a lot, though. Like, and it's even made it on air a couple times where, uh, and, and I can't remember. I think it was Triple H and The Rock, or or Triple H and Austin. I can't remember. Uh, a fan jumps in the ring and went after somebody, and they both uh, came in with the referee and just yeah. beat the hell out of the face. It's like once you cross over the barricade and you enter that ring, you you are. Not only not only are you going to jail, but the wrestlers. You're 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 uh, going to get your ass beat, and, and like, it, I don't. I I think it actually might have happened in ECW once or twice after I left, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I, but I know there was a couple incidences, like, you know, and it just happens with, for some reason because people are like, oh, wrestling's fake, and I can kick your ass. Well, I like that's that the way. wrong thing to to think. You know what I mean? Like, you're you're first number one. You're an asshole. Number two, you're probably drunk. And number three, you're going to get your ass beat because you you don't know who you're you're messing with. You even seen in in today's wrestling, there was one that uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. I know you made a couple of comments on them. And I think during mm-hmm. the elimination. There was uh, they were on a talk show and they heard that F word. I don't I I don't like the F word because it's like, yeah, you know, outside looking in, you're of course you're gonna think it's fake. Yeah, you get in there and do what these guys do. Fake is it when you bring in a stunt double. You know, yeah. these guys are out there busting their ass, putting themselves through tables, falling off landers, and it was Jim Ross who said it the best during the uh, ladder match, uh, watching the ladder match DVD. And uh, he says on there, you can't, you can't fake falling off a twenty foot ladder. No. You don't get hurt. And, and so, you know, we saw two separate interviews. They said one was the great small, the other one was with uh, Austin Terry. And both the interviewers had told him in each separate that, uh, oh well, it's fake. Boom, and they snap. And I think uh, I think Waller was just about ready to punch. Said, "Come here, let me show you just how fake it is." It was ready to deck the dude in the face. And, I mean, yeah, you, no matter who you are, and, and, and no matter how cartoonish wrestling gets, you know, because we know the booking gets pretty pretty out there, it's still, it still hurts. A, a chop is still a chop. You know, it, regardless of what it is, you know, you can't use it. It's scripted. Use the word scripted. I'd rather you say scripted than fake. It's uh, it's, it's entertainment. It's enter- I mean, it's entertainment. 
Um, yeah, I, I have I have uh, multiple friends in the wrestling industry. I have a lot of friends in the independent scenes and the independent circuits. Andrew, you know, I have a good friend in TNA, um, and you know they they've been approached as well. You know, and they're like, uh, you know, what they say, they, it's like, all right, you get in this ring and you take a hit or you take a blow or, you know, or you drop down on the mat a thousand times to, to practice and get it right. Or, you know, you get hit with a chair shot or, you know, yeah, the, it, it's a storyline. But these people still lay their bodies on the line. And, you know, people just got to realize that. Yeah, it's scripted, but still. I still think it's, you know, it's so worth it. We actually got some, uh, some comments in here. I'm going to throw one up here. Uh, Jay. Jeremy uh, Crenitti. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think it was ECW's uh, Gangsters Paradise uh, when that fan tried to clothesline one of the pit bulls and he got destroyed. LOL. That sounds, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure the exact show, but uh, yeah, I kind of remember something like that happening. Like, I mean, why, why are people so stupid? <laughs> like, yeah, seriously. <laughs> You know, I've actually heard people hey, Jeremy, say, this one's for you, buddy. I, well, I've actually heard people say, uh, well, you know, I, I paid my ticket and, you know, I can do it. It's like, no, you you come to the show. Yeah, you may have paid your money, but also show, show the respect to the entertainers and the, the wrestlers that are there to perform for you. You don't come to pay your ticket to be a part of the show. You know, you are there to watch, be entertained, let the workers do their job. You don't see... Uh, Bay, I'm going to use you as an example. You don't see Bay coming to your job, uh, either telling you how to do it or even doing your job or, or trying to take over. Know your place. It's it's respect. And if you if you're going to pay your ticket and and disrespect these wrestlers, number one, you're gone and, and most likely banned for life. Number two, you know. These things keep happening, and it's it's an easy way for, for whether it's WWE, TNA, they don't have to come back to that city. And, and one person is going to ruin it for everybody else. Well, well I mean, look, 99.9% .9 of the times, any person that's going over that guardrail and going to try to attack a, a, a wrestler mm -hmm. during a live show, they have to be intoxicated in some way. There's no way they're sober and thinking they're going to do that. There's no way. Or, or, or uh, it's legitimately that dumb. I mean, it's even, it's not even, uh, oh, sorry. It's not even like, um, like when they're at the show or like, like right after the show. Um, there's a uh, YouTube channel and, and it's like, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's like things that happen like, like while wrestlers on the street or, or like while they're in a restaurant or something like that. And I've seen, I don't know, may, maybe they're fans, maybe they're not, maybe they're just assholes. Uh, but they'll come up and I'll you, uh, who was it? I think it was, uh, it was John Cena. John Cena was at a coffee shop and it was just like filming him and like asking him like dumb questions like, so Cena, uh, you going back to that fake shit or, you know, uh, when's the next fake uh, fake show you're going back to? Uh, and it's like, dude, have you seen the size of this? Uh, of Cena, dude, and, and you've seen the size of yourself. Cena will knock you the heck out. I, I mean, wasn't he was just on Stern the other day? I think he was talking about that about a fan or something. <clears throat> I think I saw a clip of that. While we're on the topic, though, the other uh, next comment. Uh, from Jay's, uh, how about when Seth Rollins got speared by a fan and acted like a bitch? Uh, Dick Murdoch would have broke that fan's arm. And, it's the truth. And, and, well, and it comes down to, you know, again, you cross that barricade 
and, and you get your arm broken or, you know, even worse, Drew asked for it. And you can't – the wrestler has uh, – is is not reliable or, or it's not he's not responsible for what happens to you you cross that barricade you entered now into a world that uh is full of pain and violence and <laughs> the, the ticket does not say uh i can cross it uh, full access you know participation and no it, it says you know your your row your seat and pretty much you know, keep your eyes in your seat. Um, but yeah, and it's just like and so about Seth Rollins and uh, and Dick Murdoch. You know, you got different wrestlers who handle the situation differently, which is okay. You know, it really depends on on who you're or who you are as a wrestler. You know, now you know. Thankfully, these wrestlers are are only going to beat the hell out of you. When they could do more, they could turn around and sue you, you know. And, and as a fan, you know, you come and 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 enjoy these shows. I've I've seen where where fans would come from nosebleed seats and and jump the barricade. It's like, all right, yeah. So I understand you paid your ticket, but do you really have the money for uh to to pay somebody that's already you know sitting on a shit ton of money? Do you really got the money that you could be sued for? You know, and, and even even you go back, it's like they could even do both. Be happy that uh, that that they're only beating the hell out of you versus breaking your arm and then turning around and suing you for for trespassing and other you know endless amounts of criminal charges you could be charged for. Very it's true. About, it's it's not hard. Uh, to to respect the entertainers and the wrestlers who come to your city, and and put on a show. It's true. I mean, I mean you're a fan. Be a fan. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the show. Stop. That's all. It's very simple. <laughs> you go to your kids' football games. You're a fan. You, of course, yeah. you're a parent, but still, you're a fan. I mean. Well, I mean, and and I'll use you. Uh, I'm gonna bring football into this too. It's like. You know, everybody says, you know, well, the difference between rest, the, re the reason wrestling is fake, uh, but football is real, is because uh, you see them actually get hit, and it's like, no, there's they're both entertaining entertainment sports. Football, you go for the same reason you go for wrestling for the, to be entertained. You know, it's yeah, with wrestling, it's it's choreographed. You plan things out. You talk over your match. But at the same time, you're still out there. You're still going to get yourself hurt. And if you're working with a, a close friend uh, like Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, you can work as stiff as you want and, and really lay it in. And you and you can sit there and tell me, oh well, you know that's fake. Yeah, let, let's talk about the bruises from yeah, kendo sticks. Uh, who is it? Dominic Mysterio, when he first started back in, what was it, like 2020 or something, it was, uh, this was when Buddy Matthews uh, was still in WWE and he was with South Rollins. They really laid in those kendo stick shots on Dominic. <laughs> and, and you could just see the welts in the black and blue. And, but that's fake, right? Like, I, I, I got I to gotta give props to, to Dominic because – um, I, I mean, I have not really watched much wrestling, and I've said it numerous times over the last 20 years. And I've watched uh, watched Royal Rumble, and I watched Elimination Chamber. And I guess it was during Elimination Chamber last week. When he came out, the heat that kid had, you couldn't even hear him on the microphone. He had so yeah, much. Uh... He just came out. I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, what they've, been doing that. they've been doing that to him uh, ever since uh, he turned on Ray. So it's been going on, bud. Uh, how long has the judge, ever since the Judgment Day has been together, they've, they've been uh, booing him like that. But uh, I, he'll turn. Yeah, I, I, tell, I tell you what, though. The, uh, and the most the – most, uh, these six wrestlers I've seen take a lot of bang and uh, a lot of these extreme matches in WWF 
um, where the Dudley Boys, Edge and Christian, and the Hardy Boys, uh, they they took they took things to extreme, man. Uh, and uh, table ladders and chair matches probably won't the greatest TLC match of all time and one of the most entertaining, amazing matches I ever saw in my life. I I think they had, I think there was, I don't know if there was two or three, two or three of them. I remember the one at WrestleMania and that was probably my favorite one. That was the one where Edge speared uh, Jeff Hardy off of the uh, ladder. And, and I'll, uh, I'll go, I'll just go back to that in a minute. So uh, back to the Dom uh, uh, subject we were talking about. I think uh, this is from Jay. I think Dom has a lot of potential to be great. And, yes, absolutely. He has – and I'll never forget the whole uh, custody ladder match with Ray and, and Eddie. And I remember – and I did goosebumps just thinking about it and, and talking about it. Anybody who knows me knows Eddie Guerrero – is my all-time favorite wrestler. Dom, I I mean, when you have your own father calling you a dick, you know you you know that you are playing your part. And and he's got that that Eddie Guerrero heat, I call it. Because Eddie, he played the part and he knew he, how to draw the heat or to get you get himself cheered. He he reminds me very much of Eddie. He really does when I look at him. I mean he's got you know he's got the haircut like him and all and you know, he's doing the frog splash, and uh, yeah, he, he just his character overall. He plays, he plays the part, and he you can you can see a younger Eddie, uh, yeah, ring work and characterize spitting image of Eddie to a T, yeah. So, um, you got Dominic and um, uh, Rhea Ripley has uh, I guess the. New era, Eddie Guerrero and uh, China. Yeah, 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 and and see, like, and it's, it's crazy because you know that was what twenty years ago. That was such an amazing thing the two of those did, and it was so over. And uh, for both of them, I mean, it was amazing uh, work and storyline they had, and 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 they played it up and they worked the balls off of it. And um I know I who would have thought twenty years later you'd be seeing first off Ray Mysterio's son uh doing it with um you know Rhea Ripley. I mean uh, it's being revisited a little bit and it's it's kind of wild. And it still works. Oh yeah. It, but I'm gonna kind of pick on Dom and integrate it into this uh this next comment. Jay says scripted and fake is two different things. Absolutely. But definitely the old days looked more real than now. And it, I will agree with that 100%. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny because uh, Jeremy, he's, uh, he's, uh, yeah, I feel like we've become good friends over the last uh, month, six weeks. Uh, he's on my Facebook page a lot, commenting back and forth on stuff. And he always brings that up, you know, how just the, the new stuff is nothing compared to the old stuff. And it's true. Like the new era of wrestling is just so um, different. It really is. It, it's, it's a it's whole, different. everything about the business now is just so different. So different. You even see it with Dom and it's like, you know, whereas back it's in the days, you could really see that people, number one, they stuck, they stuck to their character. Their timing was spot on. I'm going to pick on Dom a little bit. It's like, yeah, he's getting that heat, but at the same time, you can tell when he's looking for it because a lot of the times he'll raise up the mic to go speak, but then they'll be like, just before the fans start booing, he'll pull it away. And it's like he pulls it away too fast, and, and then everybody boos. And it's like if your timing is a little bit better, it's going to be more realistic. And, and so there's – that number one, and when when I can notice it, because I'm not very, uh, I don't pick things up, you know, very often right away. But it's it's definitely uh, the old school days. My favorite era, not so much attitude era, but more of the ruthless aggression 
WCW, ECW, things like that. That's where the realism and the creativity was. Other than bringing in Urban Bray Wyatt uh, and his character work and the creativity he brought. That was the only time when he came into wrestling, that was the only time the uh, the creative had really sparked back into um, into wrestling. And, and unfortunately, since his passing, uh, you know, creative is, is kind of just, you know, died again. Uh, and I, you know, I, I didn't watch none of that stuff, so I never really saw any of his work or anything. And I'm sorry to, I missed it. You know, I'll go back and watch at some point, but we have um, somebody said hello. Let's uh, give them a little shout. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, J- James uh, Green, I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, thank you for joining and welcome uh, to the show. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Welcome I, to I, the, I, want to, I want to know, Cameron, Andrew, who's first and who's the last hit? Which hit are you? I'm first. And I'm last. <laughs> I, I just hit a little harder than he does, so. There you go. Uh, that's why they say that that's why I'm last. Saving the best for last. That's right. Uh, I mean, eh, if you put it that way. But uh, I was going to say it was about like the new era versus like the old era. Um, the best show. Now, now it's more uh, it's more political now. Um, yeah. well, it's always been political. I was just going to say the well, same thing. I, well, oh, more, oh, now, more, oh, more oh, now than it, than I don't, it used I, to be. I don't, think it, I don't think it's as political now as it was then. The, like, here, here's, the, here's the weird thing. And I, 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 I've talked about about this with some people. Um, I don't know if we should go down this road, but um, women in the business, okay? The women in the business for up until ten, maybe fifteen years ago, were not treated nicely. They were not treated with respect. They were treated no. as rats, as you know, and, and groupies. That's how they were treated, and they were um, done wrongly for many years. And now they are getting respect, and they're working their ass off, and they're working, in my opinion, just as well, if not better, as the guys. And they're putting on amazing matches and entertainment. And I think a, the big difference now is, and I saw a video last night on YouTube, um, that ran down the complete roster of women in WWE and who they're dating or married to. And oh, every man. one of them girls, well, I'll say 95% of the women in, in WWE right now, all the ones that are seeing somebody, which is like 95% of them, they are yeah. seeing a worker in the business. They're seeing either somebody in WWE or married to them or AEW or somebody on the indies. Yep. So uh, the, they're all, it's now like this, like it's a, it's a close knit thing where before it was never like that. The, the women okay. were. So, so since we're going down this road, um, I want to kind of go a little bit further is, you know, I can see uh, how women were treated back then, but also, you know, now, and, and I'm going to use the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. Uh, all I keep thinking is Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, you Jack Sparrow. Uh, Johnny Depp? Thank you. Uh, you know, the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case, that really brought uh, the forefront of, um, the women's part in, in everything and where it's the women is not always the victim. And so now you, you, you know, rewind, you know, all the way back and it's like, I can't put all the blame on the guys. Yes. I'm not, I'm not discrediting the things that they have most likely did. I'll use the, the uh, allegations against Vince McMahon, you know, and it's like, yeah, there were others named, but, I mean, the text messages that were leaked out on there uh, and, and that came out that were directed to uh, whoever it was, a female worker that, that 
you know, was hired there. It's like that's that's really excessive and it's uncomfortable. And you know, you get into a business, whether it's WWE and, and, or, or wherever, and you start getting um, close to a promoter that you know, yeah, they're going to assert their authorities, which is not right, but at the same time, how many of these women that were treated so bad? You know, how much, how many of them asked for it by throwing themselves to either get that raise or to uh, get that promotion? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Tammy Cinch, you know, I mean, she, she bounced around with with quite a few guys, you know, and then, I mean, well, there's a difference. There's a difference in being, being, um, a whore, I'll say, you know, because she was married to Chris at the time. And she was fucking guys behind his back. There's a difference in between doing that and sleeping with your boss to advance. There's that's a big fucking difference. Well, yeah, and I mean, and, and the guys are not, uh, they're not any different. I mean, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. You know, that originally started out as an angle, but where you know, we we're not sure the timeline of when that became into uh in, into the real life and it's like would have would have triple h gotten as many title reigns i uh, had he not married the boss's daughter uh yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't think that had anything to do with no, it i mean I, triple I, triple h was truly but i i mean i you want you want to open a can of worms you want to you want to go down the fucking rabbit hole with this vince mcmahon thing because i i'll i'll fucking talk about it you want to know my feelings i'll talk about it Hey, Let's we're, talk we're, about it. That's uh, <laughs> that's what we're here for, dude. I'm, hey, look, I'm two drinks I, in about to be third, so yeah, that's two. I, I, are you sure it's only two? You're, you're. I can tell you're a little. Uh... <laughs> it's, well, let, uh, let, let me let me ask this: Whoever's watching, do they want to hear me talk about the whole my thoughts on all these allegations and and? I'll, I'll I'll let them decide if they want to hear it. <laughs> Is Andrew praying over there? He's like, please. <laughs> oh, 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 look, we got a sure. We got a sure. Let's do it. We got a sure. We got a sure. We got a sure. All right, I'm going to grab another one, so I'll be right. Well, we can, I can still hear you. So. All right, let you hold hold that thought. I'm going to go grab uh, my bottle so I can refill before I go off. You know what? While we're on that, we're going to take a brief intermission. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and refill the. Uh... I'm just going to go ahead and refill everything. And... All right. Look, everybody left. <laughs> People are pouring. Every People are pouring. People are leaving. They're, 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 they're gearing up. For this one, we're here. We're here. Oh, but hey, until and uh, while we wait for Andrew to get back, have you ever thought about doing the uh, going to like galaxy cons and stuff like that? And uh, I, I think you, I think uh, the Chubby Deli would be a good hit and like one of the galaxy, uh, galaxy con meet and greets and stuff. Stuff like yeah, that. I, 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 I've done some. I mean, I've, I've done some wrestling conventions, I did a Comic book convention uh, last year here in Nashville. Yeah, people can get hold of me and work out a deal. I was trying to behave and only stick to one tonight, but since we're about to go down a very, very uh, adventurous journey, I think that pauses for another one. Look, I've got. I've what got are you drinking, can. Andrew? I'm drinking some Red, Red Bull. Bull sugar free. I, I I can't stand Red Bull. No offense. Really. Yeah, I, you know what? I tried it once, and I just I could not take the taste of it. I hated the taste of it. My wife usually does a lot of the flavors. I I do the sugar free. Uh, sugar free, I don't. I mean, I don't. I usually drink like you know. I I used to drink Rockstar sugar free or okay. Monster, but uh, it's, yeah, it's just the Red Bull itself. Red Bull, I just don't like Red Bull. I don't know. So anyway, you you want to just ask a question, and I'll start going. Um, just get right into it and what your, whatever your thoughts is. Let's, um, let's, let's just let's do dive right in. I think on Brock Lesnar was Brock. Do you think Brock Lesnar was was truly 
uh, in on everything. I don't think he was a name. By, by you me. know what? I, 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 here's the thing. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say. First of all, everybody's in on it. Every fucking buddy's in on it. You know, I, I've, I've seen some fucking, uh, tweets come out or, um, you know, posts where people are like, Oh, I didn't know this is going on. I call fucking bullshit. Okay. It's fucking bullshit because this shit has been going on for probably 40 plus years, if not longer, in that company. Okay. And the whole business. It's not just it's not just WWF or WWE. It's the whole fucking business was very corrupt and ugly like this. Okay. And it's well known throughout the business. I when I went to wrestling school, I was fucking warned. If you're going to go work for WWF and do jobs, you will be propositioned by Pat Patterson. You need to make the choice. Do you want to suck his dick and get a push, or do you not want to and get your ass beat? You got to make that choice. Okay? So if I'm being warned at you know my first few months in wrestling school in 1990, okay? Yeah, born, by the way. Happy birthday. <laughs> This shit's been going on, and everybody fucking knows. You can't tell me the the people that it's going on with are not talking. They don't right. know. People, it it once one person knows, then they're fucking. Especially now, everybody's on their phones and they're fucking texting. Oh, did you know? Uh, uh, Vince is fucking this one, and he's buying her Lamborghinis, and uh, oh, Johnny Ace is, is is tag teaming with Vince, and he's doing this one. The whole fucking locker room knows. The whole office knows. Everybody fucking knows. You Shit, can't tell I'm me these people, You can't tell me none of these fucking people don't know. I call bullshit. And anybody that goes out there and says, "Oh, I didn't know this was going on," fuck you. You're a liar. Seriously. But there's a difference between knowing about it and minding your business. No, no. Here's here's this is the problem. This is the problem because don't come out and say you didn't know. You're trying to alienate and 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 cover your own fucking ass. That's right. bullshit. Everybody knows what's going on in that company. Everybody that collected a paycheck in that company in the last forty years knew what the fuck Vince was doing. They knew what Pat Patterson was doing. They knew what Johnny Ace was doing. They know what they're all doing. This yeah, is the, Bob, Bob Holly even said himself, hold on, Bob Holly even said himself in an interview with Stone Cold, well, he even told uh, Stone Cold on the podcast when, when he first came in, uh, Pat Patterson said, hey, look, uh, if you let me blow you, uh, we'll push you to the top. And he was like, hell no. I, I, you know, I, I, I've been told by, I you know, I know people that have said yes, and you know you you kind of knew who those people were through the years because all of a sudden things were getting done for them. I I, I know name. I'm not going to fucking name names. It's none of my business. That's not a, not my business. They're the ones that say yes. But also too, this girl that's now you know suing Vince or whatever the hell she's trying to do, she's just as guilty, okay? Because she could have said no. Mm-hmm. She took the fucking page checks from Vince. She took the, the gifts and she delivered. Well, once the, the delivering stopped, then she wants to, to sue and get more. Well, she's just as guilty as Vince. You and, know, there's, and that's there's no where, innocent here on either side. Well, no, and, and that's where I, th this is where, you know, the woman always comes in and tries to play victim. It's like no, you need to own up to your shit too because you're just but like you said, babe, you're you're just as guilty. Number two, there is a difference because there have been uh, things that have, and everybody is looking at Brock Lesnar uh, as as being a part of this. I, I feel I feel I kind of feel bad for Brock. I really do. I mean, look, is he innocent? No, no, no not at all. No. But he 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 got pulled into this. Mm -hmm. And he got pulled in this because they were trying to entice him back and they were trying to gift him with fucking bodies, you know? So it, 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 he, I, I, I feel bad for him because he, he's in unintentionally part well, of the trap. But, but, he, but he's wrong too. You know, he did wrong. If he partaked in that stuff, then he's just as wrong. 
Well, and the thing is, though, it's like, yeah, I mean, I, everybody knew about it, you know, and it's, you know, the reason they keep coming out and saying, oh, well, I didn't know about because you're trying to cover your own ass. And, and you're going to not be as guilty as somebody else. If, if you if you knew about it and you decided to uh, just keep your mouth shut, I can't fault you for that. I can't fault you for minding your business. However, at the same time, uh, if, if you are a part of it, you're participating in it. Uh, you know, while, well, here's you know, the thing. every Everybody, and, and it's, it's a fine line because these people, everybody's keeping their mouth shut. And you know why? Because they're all protecting their fucking paychecks. Well, yeah. And it's and, 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 hey, investment. Yeah, I, I mean, look, <laughs> it, this shit happens in fucking politics. It happens in every form in the entertainment business, whether it's wrestling, music, fucking uh, acting. It, it happens in any fucking business. It happens in fucking the food industry. It happens in any, any industry. Okay, you, this shit's like, going on every day. Shit, it happens in everyday daily life. But can you blame them for, for keeping their mouth shut to protect their paycheck? If you're not participating in it, but you know about it and you're remaining to keep your mouth shut to continue to be able to continue to put food on your family's table. That's the thing. It's tough. Yeah. You know, and, and you know what? I, I would probably end up doing the same thing. You know, it, it's, it puts everybody in a very ugly, bad position. And, and has, who, I'll use, uh, I'm just going to throw, uh, I'm going to say, uh, you know, um, Bobby over here. Now, just a g random generic name. All right. Okay. So Bobby over here, minding his business. He you know, he knows about it, but he keeps his mouth shut. You know, now, now you know, Bobby's name gets thrown out there. Oh, well, you know, uh, Bobby knew about it and this and that. Well, now everybody's going to turn against, uh, you know, oh, Bobby over here. For knowing about it and holding him just as guilty as the people that participated in it. It's like, right. Uh, why is Bobby being, you know, demonized and condemned for minding his business when he, the one participating, he's just, you know, trying to collect the paycheck and, and provide for his family? Well, well I have to find that those doors, if it's closed and I don't see it, it's not in my business, but I hear about it and the rumors are going around. I can't. I'm good conscience of me. I can't. I, I can't be. Well, happy. here here's where it's going to get really hairy, though, mm -hmm. because you know there's been things coming out the last week, which I I, I you know where there's smoke, there's fire. That mm -hmm. Stephanie knew what was going on. It was helping yeah. cover up this stuff for her father. Yeah. You know so. But yeah, she also stepped down after everything that came out. Exactly, and exactly. How much, how much of that is a lot of this is uh, he said, she said. You know. Well, to also know, take note, you. I, I don't think we have seen Stephanie since she stepped down. No, she no, has no. stepped she, out of the private eye, and you know, I, I give I give Hunter a lot of credit because. You know, he's like the prime focal point of the company now. He's the face of the company, and he's out there, and I I think he's going to end up fucking taking shrapnel and get taken down. Oh, yeah. But well, also, I, too, he fucking knew what was going on. So, I mean, so, you know, this keeps uh, not wanting to show. So, Brock, or uh, Jay, uh, Jay says, Brock didn't even do anything, and they are erasing him. It is ridiculous. <sighs> You know, it's the last I had heard is that uh, the superstar that was in question, and this is why everybody jumps to it being Brock, is it was a wrestler uh, and a UFC fighter. Immediately, your mind goes to Brock Lesnar. Because sure. the biggest name, biggest name that. Well, uh, talking about uh, the affair between uh, Mickey James and uh, John, John Cena. Yeah. Nobody mentions that. Nobody mentioned. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. But oh, yeah. him, I mean, that's different. That's that's uh, when you're talking about an affair between two consenting adults. That's right. not sexual harassment or or anything like that. Oh, uh, what's this one say? Oh, sorry. Go Jesus ahead, Mike. 
<laughs> People saying The Rock got a high position in the company to now run things. Well, he did. Yeah, The Rock did get. Uh, I honestly, I'm not crazy some type about of position. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I'm not crazy about him. I mean, uh, is he just there as a figurehead because of his uh, power and, and his name, or is he actually involved? I know he's got the football thing going too. That you know. He, Last time, he, he, brought, he pumped in quite a uh, quite a lot of money for uh, TKO. Okay. And now yeah. he's really going on with uh, you know him stepping well, in hey. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns and and this and that. And I've heard mixed reactions when it comes to the, the whole thing. I don't like none of it. I for some reason I like I I don't think the Rock should be even involved in anything right now. I, there was no no need for it. And him as a heel, it don't work. No, it does I'm, not. I'm work. not a big fan of Hollywood Rock or uh, Hollywood Hill Rock. It, yeah, I was back in 2003 when he first started. It doesn't turn Hollywood. me on, you know. <laughs> yeah, 2000. It's funny. I think it was it. Seth Rollins was saying he's been doing the same shtick mm -hmm. for 20 years. No, okay. 20 years ago, the Rock's shtick was over and worked and was fun and everybody loved it. 20 years later, it's like lame. But mm -hmm. Ric Flair has been doing the same shtick for 40 years and it's over even fucking more now, 40 years later. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, uh, when the Rock first came in, he was just like the Usos. I mean, dressed the same way, acted the same way. He he was more of a high flyer and uh, technician wrestler when he first started, but when uh, I guess I guess when they transitioned into the Attitude Era and uh, he started working with uh, uh, Vince McMahon and the corporate uh, whatever their faction was called, um, you know he changed his gimmick and it's been like that ever more yeah, ever since. So yeah, he's about right. But look, John Cena, when he came in, he he changed gimmicks and then finally went I've to. Never uh, See, but there's a difference between The Rock, Roman Reigns, and John Cena, uh, and, and how they were uh, how they were both different. Cena and Roman were both almost identical, uh, you know, with, with a few exceptions. You know, WWE, uh, when when both of them are their respective faces, would try to cram Roman Reigns uh, during his uh, time as a face, and John Cena, you know, in the era prior, would try to cram those two down the audience's throat. You can't do that; it's not going to work. And they, they they would shove Cena, you know, so far down you know, everybody's throat that he got sick and tired. Of the same thing with Roman Reigns. But now you switch it up. You give Roman Reigns the head of the table gimmick, and and he got over real quick. Well, now three what three years later, people are getting sick and tired of it. Or well, Rock, here's what I like: face Rock. I, I but I don't like this second heel run. I would rather, if, if we're being honest, my best my best time of watching The Rock, two thousand and three. When he first went into Hollywood, when he first had those big rivalries and he first turned uh, that Hollywood heel, that was his best work. No, it was I not. I, 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 will, I will fight you on that. That was not his best work, and you know it. Bay, let's get your thoughts on this. Um, I think right before he went Hollywood, when he was at his peak, yeah. I, I I thought he was at his 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 peak, and I, I he's done, I, I you know nothing. He's to move forward since, I mean, but yeah. but again, Ric Flair has done the same exact match for forty plus years, and it works. And you know, but I mean, and he's another one that did shit on so much because of his age. It's like. If you're still able to go out there and do the things that, you know, whether it's even just coming in as a manager or a mouthpiece or whatever it is, let the guy be happy. 
Flair Flair can be the best mouthpiece. I I just saw him uh, on Instagram. <laughs> fucking two days ago. I was pissing myself. I was cracking up laughing. He's now doing uh, advertisements for like generic Viagra and Cialis. You can order generic Viagra, generic Cialis, eighty-seven cents a piece. Woo! Yeah, I was. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, yeah. this guy went from that to this, but it works, and it's hysterical. And God bless him. You know, he he's like I said at the beginning of the interview. Chubby Dudley is over more now, thirty years later. Ric Flair is over more now, forty years later. And I think he Man, he's what ninety nine now. Just turned ninety nine. <laughs> I mean, it, it, he's it taking has, that generic Viagra and Cialis, keeping that heart going, yeah. keep that blood pumping, baby. Appreciation, Woo! Though, I, I don't think. I think Jesus Christ. Is... Go ahead, man. I'll let you finish. Oh no, I was just saying, isn't his wife like forty years old, and he's like in his? I don't like even 90s? think he's married anymore. They 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 split, and then they were together, and split. But I think they're I think they're on the outs they're now. Like five yeah, she she was by his side there a, a while, and you would always see her in the background and stuff and all. I haven't seen her in the background in a minute. But the thing about, yeah. uh, and, and I forget what I was going on about, but Rick, it, it just seems like, and I'm actually going to uh, look this up. Rick Flair, I think he'd been married like five, five or six. Yeah, it was like five. I just saw an interview clip of him on Joe Rogan talking about all the alimony he's paid over the years, the millions of dollars in alimony. He is currently married, and he is on his fifth marriage. He's been he's been married since 2018. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's just like it he married blows- Fifi. I think it was a Fifi. He was her gimmick name. It was Fifi. Yeah, I believe it was. I believe it was. Who's Leslie Goodman, Elizabeth Hartwell, Tiffany Van Denmark, Jackie Beams, and Wendy Barlow. With Wendy Barlow being Wendy. the only name that really sticks out to me. And I feel well, like Well the other ones were just normal, you know yeah, normal I mean, women. They weren't people from the business. Yeah, you know it's I, funny, I've seen Rick Flair on uh there was a TV show, my wife freaking used to watch it a lot. Uh Bike swap. Rick Flair was Rick Flair and his wife. I can't remember which wife it was, but they were on the TV show Wife Swap, and I just thought that was freaking hilarious. Who did, who did he swipe swipe with, uh, swap with? Uh, it was the uh, Lorenzo he was Lamas. Probably, oh my god, he was probably bummed out when he realized there was no sex involved. <laughs> right. <laughs> But with Rick Flair, does it really matter? Like, you know, he's still going to try to womanize whoever he's in the room. Oh with. yeah, that's, that's you it. know, it's Rick Flair. It wouldn't be Rick Flair if he didn't try to put the charm on. You know, exactly. It's just, and I forgot what I was, uh, what I was going to say earlier. Um, but you know, oh, I remember now. So, um, you know, I think the reason that you know Rick Flair is more over, and and babe, you're more over now today rather than back then is it's because of the uh the appreciation value i think he's gone more I, I think you know when you watch him you watch you guys back in in those times you don't really have the appreciation uh in, until in, until those times are gone for instance you know ecw you know you don't have the people don't have the appreciation for ECW until after it was gone. And now look yeah. how, how big it's gotten. You know, now everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, Chubby Dudley's you know, out doing this and that and bringing back what we used to love to watch. It's the appreciation value has skyrocketed because of you coming in and bringing the fans the things that they missed. Rick Flair is so so far over because of the things that it's all about the nostalgia, I believe. And I think totally. you're it you're totally right because look, uh, Chubby Dudley really didn't do anything. You know, like I had such a minor role in, in ECW and even as a Dudley, but the fact that I was tied to ECW 
And the Dudleys, that where Bubba and Devon went on to become, you know, the greatest wrestling tag team of all time. You know, I have those two connections, and people are interested to hear, you know, stories and nostalgia. And um, now that I'm doing this whole reaction channel and interview thing, um, it's kind of reinvented myself as something else now. And there's interest, and, and I'm outspoken and say my thoughts and, you know, throw Vince McMahon under the bus. I don't give a fuck. I just saying, you know. Well, that, that's what what I, do. I, I think if you just stay relevant and, and you, you you put yourself out there, you're going to be more of a hit now rather yeah. than if you just kind of fade off and, and decide, you know what, I'm going to work a regular nine to five and not really, you know, bother. Uh, you know, yeah. Hey, look, I'm working a nine to five. Don't get me wrong. I'm fucking working nine to nine. Uh, you know, I'm working 12 hours a fucking day. That's why, you know, you guys have been trying to get me to come back on for a few months. And I'm like, I'll, I'm, uh, the way my work schedule is, like, I literally, like, here was the fucked up thing. Like, I went in this afternoon and I was supposed to, I do catering. I do a catering uh, delivery job. So I go in, I get all my fucking stuff ready to go do my, my catering delivery. I'm literally going to pull the van up to the, the building to, to start loading up. And I get a call that the order was canceled. <laughs> like, oh. Because it was for a softball team, a college softball team, and it was raining, and their game got canceled. But then oh. now tomorrow, oh, look, who, who would you be enjoying with? I, 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 are they able to hear this conversation? Oh, yeah, but it's, it's she, she's hard <laughs> worse. Hey, trust me, she's hard worse. Oh, boy. Well, can't, nobody hear my, can't nobody hear our conversation over here. Everyone wants – my son's hooked on his – Xbox, my daughter's in bed, and my wife watching a movie. There you go. I'm about so who do we have here? Come on, we, you got to introduce. This is Nevada. This is my daughter. She's uh, oh. seven today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. look how cute! <sighs> but no, it's just you know keeping relevant in. You know, it's it's very easy, and you hear it all the time. Uh, you know, whether it's CM Punk or or whoever it is. You know, uh, CM Punk's you know, infinite infamous pipe bomb. You know, he said, you know, I'm just a spoke on the wheel. You know, I, I'll end up leaving, and you know, you guys will end up either forgetting about me, or you know, they'll just replace me, and, and the business will keep exactly. going. And, and exactly. Yeah, you have to either number one make an impression. To where people won't forget about you like punk has or two stay relevant and keep making yourself out into the public you know whether you're you know like you work at nine to five but at the same yeah. time you are also providing people uh with content that they love it's all about the nostalgia and that's what it's about anymore you bring back the nostalgia yeah be an instant hit Look, yeah. go, What's go, gonna go, happen? To my, go to my go youtube ahead. channel at ShelbyDudleyOfficial.com. I'm bringing you all the ECW nostalgia. Right now, I'm focused on the whole world of Eastern Championship Wrestling. I've been bringing you interviews. I, I, I'll, I'll drop the bombshell now. I, I'll throw it out there. So I already brought back one of the, uh, the original ECW TV commentator, Jay Sully, who nobody has seen or heard from in 30 years. Well, the other day... I got hold of Jay Sully's original play-by-play -play partner, somebody who was there from the very early days of ECW. He was there behind the scenes in Tri-State Wrestling Alliance, and we've been texting the last few days, and he's blown away also. And I also reconnected the friendship of Jay Sully to this person, and that is the one and only Stevie Wonderful. So nobody, oh my God. nobody has seen or heard from Stevie Wonderful in 30 years. And even Jay Sully. Jay was like, when I did my interview with Jay, Jay's like, one day he was there, the next he was gone. He's like, and we were close. Like, we went to each other's weddings. We, we were good friends. And I haven't talked to him since. It's like 30 years. Well... Yesterday, yesterday, I was texting with uh, with Stevie for about two hours, and um, I said, "Well, hey, hey, 
here's Jay's number. Hit him up. I said, he would love to hear from you. And then on the flip side, I texted Jay. I said, hey, here's Steve's number. He's like, wait, you got hold of him? I said, we've been texting the last two hours. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, I said, we're probably going to do an interview, hopefully in the next week or so. I'm hoping. I said, but he's out of town right now. He doesn't come back until uh, Sunday night. He's like, oh, I'm out of town, too. He's like, you know, I'll, I'll wait till the weekend's over, and I'll reach out to him. I said, I guarantee you he's going to reach out to you. Five minutes later, Jay texted me. He just texted me. So they're they're back in touch and all. And yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. So and then Stevie was texting me like it's funny. He he was like starting to remember stuff. I'm I'm gonna just hold my phone up to the, the camera. He was like starting to remember all this stuff. It was he's like it's just he's like I remember everything. I remember like, I mean, he's like, I remember dates. I, he was just going off. Like, you can't even see it, but um, yeah. So it's it's going to be a very, very interesting interview when we do that one. That's Y'all heard it first here on the first and last hit. There you go. That was the first and last hit. Boom. Mic drop. And. Isn't that wonderful, as Stevie would say back in the day? But I mean, it's just—it's so amazing that not only are you able to bring, uh, you know, the original originals uh, out in, in on the content and bring them to the fans, you know, uh, thirty years later, but you are reconnecting, you know. Uh, you're bringing back old friendships and reconnecting them. Uh, you know, some haven't spoken to each other since way back when they worked together. Honestly, that means, I mean, true, true. Like take YouTube off the fucking table. Take all this other shit off the table, reconnecting with these guys and the conversations I've had, like have meant so much. Like it, it's at times brought me to tears because, that was such an important time of, in my life and really helped, you know, 30 years later, I look back and I realize it really helped form the person I've became and taught me so much in life. And a big part of those teaching were from these guys who I looked up to and, you know, they're in, some of them are in their sixties. Now I'm going to be 54 next month. Um, and I just truly, love these guys i really do and you know we'll text whenever we text and, and, and they say the same thing that they're like i just love and appreciate you so much and that means the world to me and i and i you know fuck youtube and fuck and doing it for anything else but it really means the world to me because we 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 they they were there first and they helped form something in philadelphia and then i came in and became part of something and just um, gained their respect, which was huge. It was very huge and meaningful to me. I'm hoping one day, and and, and I, I, I really hope that one day that we're able to get uh, an episode of, uh, of uh, an episode in Dudleyville, a Dudley reunion uh, of sorts where you have you know, some Dudleys to come on your show and, and really have that reunion. We need to have an episode down in Dudleyville. Pe people are constantly asking for the Dudley reunion, uh, you know, signing with all of us. And now they're asking for me to pull together for an interview. Here, here's the one thing I, I got to, I got to keep explaining this to people. Um, the way I'm trying to work my whole YouTube channel. So I'm re-watching the history of ECW. I'm going match by match and putting match by match videos out. So I'm trying to coincide now my interviews with what I'm watching. So I don't yeah. want to jump ahead. Like I I'm, I'm still in 1993. Like Shane Douglas, the last one I put out was Shane Douglas joined uh, the Dangerous Alliance and, and Hot Stuff International. So I don't want to jump ahead two years to the Dudleys and all that yet. Um, we'll, come, we'll come to that. We will come to that, and I'm going to try to pull it all together. 
will we be able to get a Shane Douglas episode where you I, I I hope so. look, I am going to attempt to reach out to everybody. You know? Um I I'll I'll, I'll I'll throw somebody under the bus. There's one person I've reached out to. Mm-hmm. And I've sent multiple messages on Facebook, and they read them instantly, mm-hmm. but they do not respond. And I don't know why, but I've sent two messages, and I'm going to send one more. I'm going to give them one more chance, and I'm going to tell them that. Like, look, this is – like, I'm not going to keep chasing you. It's a simple yeah. yes or no. Just show me the respect, yes or no. I, if you want to say no, that's fine. I don't, I don't care. But You're give me yes or no. And and the person is Hunter Q. Robbins the third, and I don't understand why you just can't say yes or no. It's a very simple thing. I, like yeah, we're, like we're both fucking humans here. Uh, I'm giving you the platform to either do an interview and tell your side of the story, or tell me to go fuck myself. It's very simple. Like it's not going to hurt my feelings either way. Yeah. But I also too would like to reconnect with you, Robin. I would like to sit and talk to you. I would like to know your story. And also, I see he's involved in like making movies and stuff now, and it's very interesting. I'd like to know what the hell you've been up to the last 30 years. It's one of those things that's like, I, yeah. if you had an issue with somebody 30 years ago, why do you say, and just say I, I don't know this story. I don't know. But I mean, just say that, oh, yeah? Do you want to talk to <laughs> It's one of those things. It's one of those things that if you have a grudge with somebody or, or you know, it's like... I, no, I don't think it's nothing. I, I, I don't know what... It, there was never, ever a problem with me and me and Robin. And Robin was always a very, very nice guy, very quiet, respectful in the locker room. I, I don't think it's anything like that. I, I think maybe he's just kind of shocked and shy. I, I don't know. But uh, just That's give me an answer. Maybe it's just the... Uh, you know, trying to get over the, uh, oh, okay, you know. I'll take Johnny Hotbody, for instance. He really seemed to have. Really? Yeah. He really seemed to have been, like, just, uh, like, oh, wow, you know, now, you know, 30 years later, nobody wanted to check on me. And this now it's like, you know, you got Bay reaching out, wanting, and then you got, you know, Mac and I that want, that want me on the show. I can see you, how it's really overwhelming. Yeah, exactly. And, and and these guys, you know, it's a guy like Hot Body, he's been through a lot. The guy was, he's had uh, like quadruple bypass surgery. He was in a coma for two months. You know, and, and it, even putting my interview together with him was kind of hard because I like to do it like, you know, like you guys, like usually like eight, nine o'clock at night. He was like, Bay, we got to do it like during the day. He's like, like my heart. Like, yeah. yeah, he's like, my heart medicine I take. He goes, I'm usually in bed by 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right. And we couldn't get it to work on a Sunday. So we did it on it, which in my opinion is the worst time to do anything on social media or YouTube was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday we did it. But it became one of the highest viewed interviews I've done on the channel so far. I mean, I'm all for making, you know, trying to work around somebody else's schedule. Um, and, and I can easily see how the, the how it can be overwhelming for somebody like uh, you know, Johnny Hotbody. Or, and I'm sure he's not going to be the only one that you run into where, yeah. you know, oh, okay. I, d- dances with Dudley, okay? I've, I've talked with him multiple times. I get... It seems it from what it seems like to me, it seems like I'm like the center point. I'm I'm like the easy, accessible Dudley. Okay. So yeah, so people will come to me and they'll hit me up and they'll be like, Hey, we want to do a Dudley reunion. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Like I I hear it all the time now. I'm like, okay. They're like, Can you help us get in touch with the other Dudleys and this and that? And I'm like, yes. And I've had a few that were, they were just going to book me, DW, Sign Guy, 
and maybe a couple like maybe spike or whatever. But for some reason, I don't know what it is with with DW, but they'll contact him and he will engage and then he backs off and stops answering or he'll block them. But I you know, me and Adafo, we sat and talked last summer. We sat down and we talked. Um and he told me he has very bad anxiety and he can't handle a lot of this stuff and he doesn't trust people and he you know which the wrestling business does to you you know you, you, because so many people try to screw you over mm-hmm. so he's very stand, uh, yeah hesitant thank you that's the word very hesitant to to do anything um it comes down to as well as that you know yeah i mean you know Having that engagement is great and all, but I think it's, you know, and I can't speak for him or anything like that. My assumption would be, you know, maybe it's just, uh, you know, he gets all right doing a little bit of engagement, but then as it goes on, it's like, okay, it's too much engagement. And that's been, yeah. yeah. you know, and I can understand it. And, you know, it, it's just. It's a it, shame because he, him, him out of all, all of them. He was my favorite. I thought he was the funniest Dudley, and at the time, I thought he was the most talented. And he's still just a nice, beautiful person. He's just a beautiful soul. He really, truly is. Um, and, and I hope, you know, when it comes time for me to say, hey, Adolfo, will you do my show? I hope he will. I hope he does. You know, and I hope we can pull together some type of signing, at least one of all of this, you know, there's, you know, again, there's the WrestleMania in Philly this year, and I was hoping to get booked for a signing, and right away, it starts again. I start getting hit up. Can we do the Dudley thing? Can we do the Dudley? Can we do the Dudley? Can we do the, you know, I get hit up like three to six times every time something big in Philly is happening like that. But it never comes together. So as of right now, it looks like I'm not going to be in Philly doing the signing. Now there's another uh, ECW reunion I just heard yesterday, the day before, in May in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So what's that? I was just in Atlantic City uh, this past weekend. Really? Look at you. Yeah, we'll be there in June. For a week. Where, where were you at? Uh, uh, I never or Tropicana. I think we. Okay. Uh, uh, did yeah, you go to Hooters? Tropicana? Did you go to Hooters? You know, we went there once. I like going there. Um, I but 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 the the food, uh, at least at that one, uh, wasn't the best. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's other reasons to go. You know. <laughs> there's Hooters. Yeah. Um, but I mean, besides that, you know, I mean, it was all right. Yeah, yeah, and the shooters. I just, and, I just, and there's fried pickles too. I, yes, I, I love going to Atlantic City and, and traveling and all. I just uh, and, and the, the different things that they put together. Um, but kind of back to the whole Dudley thing is, you know, I can understand and I and I can appreciate, you know, how people want to reach out to you and and have the Dudley reunion. At the same time, it's like, you know. It's. I, I don't know. I mean, does it take a toll on you to have everybody just hit you and just constantly bombard you about a deadly reunion? I mean, honestly, like I feel bad. Like I really feel bad because a lot of people want it. Here, here here's the problem. I think there's, is there a total of nine of us or eight of us now? Seven, eight of us? That's a lot, okay? That's a lot of people to pull together. And it's a lot of money to invest because we're all over the country. So to pull us in, just say, for instance, in Philly. It's a lot of flights. you got to fly into Philly. And then you got to put us up in a hotel. So, you know, you just say on average, and it's probably low on it, 500 a person. So you're already at like five grand, say, 
right. to, to make it happen. Probably more. J- just in travel, five grand. That's not even the pays for the thing. And you got to figure when it comes to Bubba and Devon, you're going to have to pay them guys money because they're the draw. They're, 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 they're going to be yeah, they're going to want a, a couple dollars each. So, well, I'm going to throw somebody under the bus real quick here. Um, me and uh, me and Andrew here reached out to uh, one of the uh, wide family members, and uh, I think they wanted about uh, five thousand uh, dollars just to do uh, thirty minutes of an episode, and I'm like, um, you can go after yourself. <laughs> Okay, so he, he this there's a lot I'm discovering in the wrestling business now. I mean, for 30 minutes, that's kind of outrageous, you know. No, I, I, I don't I do not know him. Is he currently under contract with WWE? No. No. Okay. Uh, I think he's currently under contract with AEW or TNA. I believe it's AEW. Well, I, I do know WWE contracted talent needs to, to interview any of them. You need to go through the office. You need to get yep. Same approved with by TNA. the office. Okay. Um, so you, you need to get approval, and then you would not I, – I would think you're not going to be charged because you're getting approved. But to get approved, you got to be a major fucking show. I mean – Seriously, like I'm, I'm not going to get approved either. So, um, but these guys that are not on their contract, what they're here, here's the problem. Before this whole stream yard and Zoom interview shows on YouTube started, there was, and I'm guessing Rob Feinstein's truly the one that originated the whole shoot interview thing. And what Rob would do is he would bring in whoever it was going to be, bring in Bubba and Devon, pay them X amount of dollars to to sit down for however many hours, and he would record his interview, in which then in turn, at the time, he would sell his VHS tapes, and then it became DVDs, and he would make his money back, and then some. It was an investment. So now what's happening is... Everybody and their mother is doing a wrestling podcast and they're trying to do these shoot interviews and the talent is like, well, you're on YouTube. My video is going to be on YouTube for ever and you're going to be making money off of it forever. It's kind of like you'll be making royalties off of it. So they want to be paid. So I kind of get it and understand it. But Cameron, like I'm with you. Like I will never pay for an interview. Never. I mean, but and, and I can, and like you, Bay, I can understand it, and and, and I most certainly uh, can. I mean, I mean, if it were me, I, I I understand the process and I understand the logic behind it. You know, I mean, I would want. You know, I mean, it's something like that. I'd, I'd like to make money too. At the same time. Two hundred to three hundred dollars for a half hour to an hour, and that's a little excessive. You know what I mean? And you know, contrary to popular belief, not all wrestlers are are nice guys. You know, I've I've been fortunate enough to go to Alpha Junior's promotion that he runs about a half hour away from me, and I've got to meet a lot of the guys and girls down there, and most of them. Very nice, you know. They'll, they'll do autographs, take photos, and stuff like that. And Davey Richards, you know, who's in TNA, you know, for some time, a uh, part of the Wolves. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I talked to him and just, you know, a complete dick. Yeah, you know, I mean, hmm. if you weren't if you weren't boosting his ego and you were not talking about him, he wouldn't he would not look at you. Yeah, he's just looking down, doing whatever he was doing, or he's like. Yep, they, I mean, just very, just such an asshole. Hmm. It's just, you know, be appreciative to the to the fans who who give you your paycheck, pretty much, you know. And 
it's I mean, I guess it's you know dude's personality or, or maybe he was having a bad day. I don't know. But it's just so I can understand uh, you know, that there are people that want to make money uh for doing an interview. But at the same time, you know, if, if you have the time, you know, I mean like yeah, like here here's the thing. I I, I can't picture myself turning around and, and charging somebody for an interview because the reason I'm doing interviews is I, I, I constantly I'll put out there on my social media once or twice a week. I am available for interviews and autograph signings for my interviews. I'm not going to charge because I'm trying to promote a myself B my right. YouTube channel and now see my, the, the banner that I want to get, hung in the ecw arena so i i have an agenda and i'm trying to promote things so the, i i charging is just wrong in my opinion but yeah, for i think side, i found you i think i found you on uh i think it was a radio guest list i think it was like years ago oh yeah i was, was on a that couple year. years ago yeah years ago yeah that's yeah. how i found you and that's how i reached out to you but then I still on there. So, that was Five, six years ago, I was on there. No, you're not on there anymore. Uh, how I found you was, uh, I think I, I was talking to Andrew, and I was like, man, I reached out to somebody who uh, worked in the ECW, and he was like, oh, man, we got to find him. And I'm like, yeah, so yeah, it, took me like five hours, it took me five hours to go through my emails to uh, find my emails from uh, a couple of years ago. And, dude, I'm – Still stoked that we're still sitting here talking to you. I mean, but you know what, though? It's one of those things. It's like, you know, you got somebody like Bay here who is just he's so willing to give back to the people who uh, have just shown so much love and support and things like that. And, and that's what the business is about, it's about giving back to those who, who pay their money to come and support. Because I, I, you know, everybody's different. Uh, you know, every every person's different. And but I truly, you know, it's like I said, like I was truly a pebble, like a, a grain of sand on the beach in ECW. You know what I mean? Like I was such a small thing, but part of something so big. But I just have number one. I have respect for people. I respect for human beings. And right. the person that's going to show me love and respect, I'm going to show it back to them. So I appreciate guys like you guys and all the other shows that have been reaching out. Like I, I've been having, like the last month I've been doing, I did a show the other night. I did a couple of shows the last few weeks. Like I've been having a fucking ball. Been meeting um, friends, having having fun on interviews and talking a lot of interesting stuff and, you know, getting my word out and my message out and, you know, just you know, having, number one, having fun. If I wasn't having fun, then I wouldn't fucking do none of this stuff. And before this slips my mind, um, after the show, uh, I need your shirt size. We have a gift for you. Um, and we want to send it to you. 2X. Cool. There we go. Um, but also, and, and so this, uh, and, and this kind of has been slipping in out of, out of my mind is, uh, is um, it's, you know, it, I, I love and appreciate just how humble you are to, to come and do these things for free. Now I can understand, uh, you know, if, if I, what I don't understand is how, a wrestler or a celebrity, whoever charges somebody for a virtual interview. Uh, now I understand if you're charging, you know, two, three hundred dollars. Uh, if there's flights involved, if you have to travel, that's different. All oh, and I mean, but you know, what, an hour, hour and a half, whatever the time is, to just come and, and you know talk on, and you don't have to spend anything. I don't see the logic other than you just being a dick. Well. Like Br Bray Wyatt, for for instance. I mean, he is a very big name in the industry right now. 
he's somebody, it's not like he wrote a book or something and he's promoting something where he's out doing the press circuit. So he probably does get, honestly, probably bombarded with interview requests. And he probably just says, hey, look, if you want me to do your show, here's the, the thing. Otherwise, it's really no sweat off of these guys' balls to, to worry about this stuff. Because especially if he's in AEW and he's on TV every week, he doesn't need to be doing this stuff. No. And, and uh, um, Bray Wyatt in, uh, Bray Wyatt was such a huge part in, you know, like people tell stories about how he was in, you know, aside from his character, in character, not a character. Uh, his just such a loving guy would give the shirt off your back, you know, and then you, you expand outside and, and, and into the Wyatt family where you had uh, Brody Lee. Again, you hear so many good things about, you know, how, how he was as a person. And it's just, you know, the biggest per the person who, who had the biggest career and skyrocketed was Bray Wyatt. And, you know, it's this whole COVID thing. And I talked about that for a minute, too, while we're waiting for Cameron to get back. People really blew, the, and I'm, I'm included, people blew that uh out of proportion, and they they didn't take it seriously. Oh, it's it's you know it wasn't really big deal. It's this and then it's like yeah, well it's more serious than than you realize. Uh, you know Eric Rowan, uh, aka Eric Redbeard, who is one that we had reached out to. He just I, I don't know, I don't know the guy. I don't know him personally. I never really heard personal stories about him. He seems more of the standoffish rather than Bray Wyatt. When I got the news that Bray Wyatt had passed, it was actually on my birthdays when he passed. And it just, you know that you have, that have such an effect on people. When I sat there and the initial shock came, and then I think it was uh, Friday, I watched SmackDown, they did the tribute. And it still, it, I didn't really cry, maybe tear up. But it wasn't registering, and then the following Monday they did the same thing, and I just I lost it. I think you know losing it for a wrestler like that. I think I'd have to put it right up there with uh, Eddie Guerrero, and mm. because of how big of an you don't realize. And I'll go back to your, you know, earlier just comments but earlier in the interview. It's like you don't realize um, how big of an impact something or someone has on you. Till they're not here anymore, and I'm getting emotional and choked up talking about Bray Wyatt. Uh, you know, and it's unfortunate where you get somebody like Eric Redbeard who, you know, thinks that, uh, oh well, you know, if you want to talk to me uh, for a half hour, it's two hundred dollars an hour is three hundred. I look, dude. I, I mean, I should understand if if there was cost involved where you have to pump out money or you have to take time to travel somewhere. All we're asking for is is not that long for you to come in and talk to us so we could uh, hear more about you and, and your career with the, you know, with the Wyatt family, with Bray Wyatt, with Braun Strowman. Uh, and, and, you know, it's just like, I, I don't understand how opposites attract, you know, but I, oh, I, it, that's it's, yep. <laughs> uh, another one. And, and let's talk about that dude for a minute though, because I dared him. To, uh, to do what is it like 45 proof uh, something or other and and this year I mean he threw it back and I'm talking like those uh, red solo cups two glasses full and I, I mean base turn beat red it's like man you what, what are you doing to uh, me don't he, he's already feeling pretty good over there don't don't put any more pressure on him I've been trying to get uh, I've been trying to get him to do at least four glasses. He wasn't pushing it. Next day, he went to work. Uh, I said, how you doing, buddy? He says, uh, fuck you, asshole. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell did I do? He says, you know what you did, you fucking dick. I said, well, I was just calling to see how my buddy was doing. Said, what happened? Did you get drunk last day or something? You were there, asshole. I'm like, whoa, okay. You know? <laughs> but, uh, well, it was like my interview with Stetson. Uh, we were sitting there drinking the whole time, and I was drinking wine as usual, and Stetson was drinking rum, and we went 
over just over four hours long. By hour two, he was pretty buzzed. By hour three, he was pretty fucking drunk. And uh, he called me the next day. And it was funny because I was sitting at the this new uh, brewery that opened around the corner from me. And I was sitting there drinking some beers. And, and he was like, I was fucked up. <laughs> He's like, I, he goes, when I woke up this morning, he goes, I was late for work. I was cursing you. I said, me, I wasn't pouring them. You were fucking pouring them. He's <laughs> like, I didn't make you drink. Yeah. But, uh, uh so babe, while it's on my mind, because, uh, I, I did completely forgot about it. Uh, I gotta get your thoughts on the gopher times. Now, um, on the, who? the, the gopher times. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me a minute. So the Dover Times, uh, and this all stems from uh, going back. You know to what? Time. You know what? If I'm going to have to explain this, I, you know what? I, I, I'm going to have to pull out the Red Solo Cup because, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, you. <laughs> I'm a little I love scared. you, brother. I love you, brother, but. Uh, <laughs> This is your fault. You're the one that brought it up. And it makes no, sense. No, you got me into this when we had the discussion with Johnny. <laughs> so, so, Beta, I, I blame Jeremy because I know Jeremy's still watching. Jeremy, this is all your fault. Whatever the hell's going on right now, because I have no clue, it's all Jeremy's fault. Oh, Cheers me, to you, Jeremy. Uh, Beta, trust me, it'll come to, uh, it, it'll come very clear very quickly. Uh, needless to say, when it comes to Cameron and I, I tend to get us into trouble without Cameron going, and then I'll go to him and be like, "Look, dude, uh, uh, I got us into some trouble. You don't have to bail us out." It's like, "What'd you do this time?" It's like, "Oh, this is where it's like, Jesus Christ." All right. So uh, Cameron, Cameron's a straight guy. I mean, yeah. And, and, I mean, and, and, uh, and Andrew's the troublemaker. Yes, absolutely. Ever since except for eight. except for when I'm on except for when I'm on the football field, uh, I, uh, then it, the rules are reversed. I, I, yeah. Anyways, so the go for times. So okay, so first we were in a group chat with uh, Johnny, and he, he started, and we were talking. Uh, about some historic things, and um, he started talking about uh, something called the, the Phoenix Times, and uh, it was sure like a sure. couple. It was like a couple uh, of days. Later. Wait, wait, wait. You're in a chat with Johnny Hotbody. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Dude, he's out and, there. We love <laughs> so. It was. Are you talking about? Is this going to get like political or something like that? No, no, no. no. Okay. Uh, so we're we're just talking uh, about some historic stuff, and he brings up something about uh, the Phoenix Times, and then I uh, ended up uh, bringing up something about the uh, go the uh, Gopher <laughs> Times, uh, which was. Um, you know how they bring out the gopher every year? To... Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously this conversation sounds like it went off the rails, and then you want to know why Hot Body is not responding? <laughs> so, so it's, hey, his, it's his fault. Listen, to be fair, to be fair, all right, uh, and, and Cameron said to take some of the blame here too because – to be fair, usually when talking to Johnny, it usually always goes off the rails. Uh, it, it, with, with usually Johnny always uh, going on about something or other, I, in good conscience, all I did was I told, uh, I started the group chat, and I, I said to I said the camera, I said, uh, I'll do it. I said, and once I realized where it was going, and he was going off about something, I says to it, I said, Cameron, I said, look, dude, I said, uh, oh, good luck talking to Johnny. He's like, he says to me, he says, Nope, I'm leaving. Well, so I go and I'm going about my stuff. Two hours later, I look at my phone with sh blown up with shit tons of notifications and messages. Like, oh, it looks like uh, they're still going on. And oh yeah, me and Johnny was having a good conversation there, and yeah, then um, 
let's go for time. I just had, I just had to break it down. We and I just had to break it down. So the go for times is basically from January to March, and we. So let me let me. I'll I'll say this. This is what I do. Okay. Whenever I'm trying to talk to somebody to get an interview set up, mm-hmm. I have the least contact as possible. All I want to know is date, time, thank you. I don't want to discuss nothing. I don't want to get in any conversations. Nothing. I leave it all for on air. I mean... And- because of... You could have situations like that happen. I don't want to discuss anything right. of topics that we will discuss beforehand. I don't want to do it. I want I- everything to be fresh and on air and natural and i mean babe to be fair though johnny did say that uh we could reach out to him anytime and well and, yeah of course you should you just know, reach out to him say hey let's do an interview when are you for open and right. discussion i mean i don't know about Oprah times and beaver times and this times and phoenix times and I mean, the, too, I mean, too much too much conversation going on i mean it seemed like johnny wanted to uh to uh, have the relationship with us, uh, kind of, kind of like what you do, and and so, however, though, after I walked away from it, I didn't think Kramer was going to go on about the go for times. Where, but it makes here's where it makes sense. And and Bay, I gotta ask you if you agree that we live in the go for times or not, because do we not live in the go for times when we have to predict spring by bringing out a gopher and whether or not they see their shadow. Is that not considered to go for times? It is. I think that's the stupidest fucking thing. I I, I think that that whole thing is. Uh, where, where's that at? That's in Pennsylvania. It's like fucking yeah. po- Poxitani Phil or whatever the fuck his name is. I, that's you know what that is. That's a reason for people to get up early and fucking drink. That's what that is. Yeah. The only. That's the only excuse for that. It has nothing to do with winter and spring. The, the, Mother Nature don't give two fucks about that gopher and his shadow. That is a bunch of people that want to dress up in long fucking coats and stupid hats and hold a gopher and fucking drink at 6 a.m. That's all that is. I agree. And you can't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> You're, You're not, not wrong. wrong. But it's just funny because the back the, the back story that Cameron has given everybody it, it makes sense, and I have made it a point uh, for every time we have somebody on the show to see if they actually agree with us. And so far, I'm what three for three, I think so far. He, you know what's even funnier? Like when <laughs> because I, I you know I'm from from fucking the Philadelphia area, Pennsylvania. So when that would happen. It was like the big thing on the news that morning. And I would say to myself every year, really? I mean, really? Like, people really think our winner is going to be now determined by the fucking shadow of this thing. I mean, are you that stupid? Oh, no. Six more weeks of winter. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking idiot. It's like my 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 grandma. Uh, they would bring in, they would come on the show, and I'm like, oh, what you watch? And she goes, they bring out this dumb goofer. Nah, predict the, our future of snow. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Grab my hey, shot of whiskey. Look, J- Jeremy knows. Look, Johnny speaks the truth. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um. Damn, there was something I was about to say. On another a, level, Johnny speaks the truth. I mean, you, you know, and, and actually, uh, speaking about Johnny, we actually, you know, all kidding aside, though, we actually have to really give him a big thank you. Uh, because had it not been for him, this whole revelation of the goal for times would not have come to fruition. It would not have made sense. Nobody would have ever really thought of it that way if it wasn't for Johnny. So, I mean, 
you know, Johnny is, is he's helped us get on to something here. You know, I mean, regardless of how many chair shots he's taken, uh, he's definitely, uh, he's a genius. And uh, how about that? It's, it's and, definitely something that, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you sit there and you think about it. And, and I tell you what, this whole gopher thing, is is just about as bad as uh, when when Cameron's great aunt decided that uh, she was related that she knew Walker Texas Ranger. Hey, did you not what? know? Me? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Walker, you want to tell him the story? Oh, screw you. Sure. So, um, I can't remember how old I was. It was years ago. Uh, I was with my grandmother. We go visit uh, my great aunt and her sister. And I think she had like dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that. And uh, we walk in the house and she goes, uh, hey, I brought somebody uh, with me today. And she goes, oh, who is it? And I go and I stand and she's like, you not know this young fella? And she goes, no. Sorry, I don't. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe we'll try and get her to remember me. Well, she has Walker, Texas Ranger on on the TV. So I asked my grandma, I was like, hey, where's the bathroom? So I go use the bathroom, wash my hands, come back out. And I'm sitting down, and she, my aunt's just like staring at the TV. And she just blurts out, I know who you are now. And I'm getting all excited. Like she, like, she finally remembers me, and she goes, Mary, you didn't tell me that we have Chuck Norris with us in the house. And I'm looking around like, where? And she's like, I can't believe we have Walker, Texas Ranger sitting in the house. I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> All righty. What are you so, What are you drinking over there, Cameron? Um, a little bit of everything. Samuel Adams. Still in the same uh, line. Which Which I Samuel? Uh, uh, this is the uh, winter. Just the haze. Just just the haze. haze. Okay. How How many deep are you in? Because you seem pretty deep. Um, well, I've had two glasses of wine and, um, one, two, three, and this is my third one. Okay. The fact that he has to, the fact that this man has to, number one, count, two, and then after he counts, think about it, tells you that he may be a little more deep than, uh, than what he's letting on here. Well, no, because... I had one, and then I had Four the wine, and then I went and grabbed another, and then I finished the Chardonnay bottle off, and then I grabbed another. So right, that's three. Uh, no, anyways, that would, oh, that would all right. So Cameron, because now you're giving miss uh, different numbers here. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> I can't see because of our logos in the way. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Um, yeah, you gotta try to fix that sometime, dude. Honestly, you don't need it there because you have it real big as shit down here. I suppose, yeah. We'll have to, uh, yeah, that, that's Cameron's fault. No, Cameron, uh, get the fuck over there. I know. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even put that up there today. Jeez. It was up there when we first started, and, um, we just kind of left it there because we had a different background, and then uh, we had this logo made, and we put that up there. So we just left it there. Hey, sometimes, but it, but it tends to get. But yeah, like, yeah Andrew, you, you you got to move your head over because you're you're blocking. There you go. Come on, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah there we go. Oh, okay. Uh, you're I like mean, hide I... hiding behind in in the dark over there behind the fucking thing. That's, on my side, yeah. it looks like I go this way. I'm hiding behind the logo. 
No, now you're perfect. Oh, well, okay. Here. So, so, yeah. so, how many fingers am I holding up, Cameron? Two. How many now? Well, it wouldn't be four because the damn logo is blocking. But uh, fine. <laughs> Back at you, buddy. Uh, so, uh, but no, it's, 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 how about that? Kickback Fridays where you get drunk with your local podcast host. Yes, absolutely. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, we do need to warn you about one person. <laughs> His name is uh, Albert Lemire. <laughs> Albert Lemire. Wait, I'm just, you have to warn me about somebody? Yeah, Andrew, Andrew, please, uh, please, please enlighten him. If he ever asks to come on your show, or ever reaches out to you, there we go. Run. There you go. Okay, so who, who's this person? His, his name is Albert Vladimir Lemire Kozlov, looking whatever the hell he is. So he his name is him. Albert Lemire. Okay, sure. Sure. Um, anyways, so he comes on the show, wants to be a part of it. I have no problem with that. And and we had questions, you know, like we typically do, uh, before he was the reason we had altered the show uh, a little more casual now. So he comes on the show, and Cameron had some questions. And I think the only thing we got to ask him was, so, Albert, tell us a little bit about yourself. For an hour and a half of it's just like holy shit, dude! How how long are you going on it for? I must have had to try to cut it at least. Literally, five. literally had to like, like, engage our voice very loud just to like cut him off and ask a question. But that's not it. No, but that's not it. It's the second. It's the second interview. Well, and that's so. So the second time. Oh, wait a minute. You, you so you, so you guys already interviewed him once, and you knew the torturous hell, and you have him back. Well, number one, that's Cameron's fault. Number <laughs> one, here's the thing: he threw you right under the fucking bus. Yes. <laughs> he didn't even, Cameron. He didn't even fucking breathe. He was like, boom, Cameron under the bus. <laughs> well, and I took the and, and I took the blame because it was my fault. We had a guest. We had a guess. <laughs> Andrew's just like, time, yep, yep, yep. The time frame, the time frame was wrong, um, and we couldn't get him on. Well, Albert hits me up, and he's wanting to talk about uh, Pat McAfee. Pat, Ma Pat McAfee, and I'm like, okay, awesome, great. Yeah, I know, I know a lot about Pat McAfee. Uh, he's he I wish I could a, talk he, more about him. So I, I really want to educate myself more about him for, before I talk about him. I'm, in, and, I'm uh, very intrigued by McAfee. He he played he played uh, he played at West Virginia. I'm from West Virginia. Um, he also played, he's a kicker for the Colts too. He was. He was, yeah, he was a kicker for the Colts. Um, then he started his own show. But anyway, so he comes on the show and he starts. Uh, uh, we start talking. And he starts talking about Pat McAfee, and what he said. What does he start saying again? Uh, we got we got to ask some questions. Well, which was great. Uh, what did you say, Cameron? Oh, um, damn it! Question. No, 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 no. Um, no. Remember what he? I can't remember what all he was saying about Pat McAfee, and then he started bringing up the numbers. Well, yeah, because he was talking about his uh, – I guess he wrote an article and he talked about his piece. And, and he was the first one to start bringing up about numbers or something. So, of course, uh, I decided to elaborate. And and immediately as soon as I started talking numbers, well, you know, that's not really, really what I'm here for. Uh, you know, not, not really – I like talking more about my piece. It's like – you're the one that brought up about numbers. So as Yeah, and then – so he brings it up again – and then I'm like, well, if you're talking about numbers with about Pat McAfee, I was like, I can elaborate. Then he cuts me off, and then he's like, that's not what I'm here for. That's not what my piece is about. Why the hell are you bringing up numbers? Why the hell are you? Bringing if you don't want, it, 
if you don't want me to talk about Pat McAfee's numbers of what he did at the University of West Virginia and what he did in the NFL, Why you bring it up? what are we talking about? We were elaborating on the things that he brought up. And, and so, of course, now after giving us a hard time, he decides to go even further. And, and there, of course, as you can hear now, we get a lot of background noise from our, from our kids. And Cameron was dealing with a lot of noise. And he had the, the gall to say something about Cameron's uh, Cameron's wife and kids. Kid. And he was like talking about my kid or some about and, our uh, noise down or some about the noise in which you don't talk about our family like that you know very disrespectful so of course now she starts you know getting very loud and uh and i'm trying to be as professional as i can uh cameron bails out at least a good three times because he's he's pissed and i'm trying to hold it together i'm pissed off at cameron for just you know again leaving me to deal with it so i'm trying very hard and it starts getting, I'm like, look, dude, I said, I got to tend to my daughter. I said, uh, you know, you're here to talk about your piece. Uh, you know, go ahead, tell the viewers about, you know, about your piece. I got to go change my daughter. So he's like, okay. Like, he had an issue with it. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, dude. And unfortunately, we ran out of time. I said, I, I actually I said, we got to unfortunately end the show. Uh We'd love to have you back on, though, sometimes. Because, again, I'm trying to be professional, trying to be nice. Uh, he makes a, a comment or something about it. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. The dude seems, you know, I mean, and here's where I, I'm going to kind of uh, be a little too understanding. The dude seems like he has some issues he needs to work out. I don't know if, you know, uh, maybe he's taken a couple chair shots to his head a couple times, uh, and he's just not used to it. But, you know, like, we're not even near the platform to come and talk about your piece and, and, and shit like that. We're not giving you the platform to come on our uh, – the opportunity to come on our show and disrespect – Take over our show. Unfortunately, you get those people, and, and when they come on the show, you, you try so hard to make the best of it. But it's there's tough. a limit. It, it is. Tough. But there's also a limit. You you never know, like what you're going to get. Like, I I've had shows I've done where I've I asked me a guest on, and I like some are just so bad, and I'm saying to myself, "Get me the fuck out of here." What did I do? Like there there was one I had I I get on the show and they're like. All right, what questions do you want me to ask you? I'm like, what? Shouldn't you have had that planned out already, though? Yeah. Like, you asked me to come on your show. This is your show. I'm not interviewing myself. Right. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to go on my fucking show. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to interview myself to, to help benefit your show. Like, Right, exactly. I mean, after the whole Albert thing, we have kind of altered the show to make it a little, a little more – relaxed, more casual, where people can just come on the show and if they want to talk about, you know, it's, it's kind of like an open forum. You don't want to talk about your, your career, things you're doing. We're all for that. But it's also just kind of sit back and and, and relax and, and just have a good time. You know? Just like we're doing. Yeah. Shooting it's, the breeze. Throwing I some should, back. Who was it? Just was it talking Bill? Some, what? Bill? It was it Bill Griffin? It was somebody who was so appreciative that we were able to, that we had altered the show this well, way. First, well, first, well, first, Bill Griffin. He's he's a uh, he's a hip hop artist, and then it was uh, Robert Wilson. They both were so appreciative of how we have done the show, to where it's not you come on the show, you get bombarded with questions. And it seems like you're you're still at work doing, you know, kind of like for a wrestler, it's like, oh well, you know, this is part of my job. This is you know, you know, going on and promoting this or that. We're not about that. We we make our show uh, a little more relaxed and kind of leave it up to the guests of, you know, we'll ask questions. 
uh, but we don't want to bombard somebody with questions to where it makes it seem like it's just your normal <laughs> average that you deal with on a weekly or daily basis or whatever it is. By making it this way, it's a little more relaxed and, and a little more fun for everybody. What happened with that one guy? I, I think, Cameron, were you telling me you were having like a hacker on or something? Yeah, that... uh. He bailed. We were supposed to do, yeah, we uh, we we, uh, we were supposed to do the show, um, and he was like, "Yeah, uh, next Saturday is perfect." So we shot for that Saturday, and when the time came around, I um, it was like three hours before the show. I'm like, "Hey, I'm just uh, reaching out. Uh, it's about three hours before the show." Um, Anything we need to know in particular, uh, you what what you do and what you don't want to talk about, um, you know, and never responded. Just looked at it. I was like, okay, maybe he's busy. So that's the thing, though, that I I won't go. I I won't I won't say. I'm actually kind of relieved we also didn't do that show too, because I was nervous about saying the wrong thing, pissing him off, and and yeah. Having him being reward, uh, awarded as a even more of a hero than he already is for shutting us down for being assholes or something, you know. Mm. But uh, I gotta stop away, guys. She needs a diaper change. So I'll be right back. Okay, good. So I see you've changed your background on uh, <laughs> behind you. I like that. This, this is like the the topic people keep bringing up. They're like, you have a background now. So is it? So is it like 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 the stream? Is it like a stream yard background that you just put up there oh. or that you found? Or is it like a background background? It's a background background. Nice, freaking look, nice. Look, 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 look. Here, here, here you go. I'll expose it. Like I'll turn the thing there, and you can see. Oh, oh, oh there it is. That's that's freaking see sweet. That? That's freaking sweet. So, Amazon, twelve dollars. Nice. I'll be able to do that soon. So through this door right here is my uh, your beer. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, so my, the steps down to my backyard. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into like a entertainment room. Okay. And um, that's where I'm gonna finally. Be able to uh, do my do our show, do my right. shows in peace and stuff like that, and um, instead of having to do it in the kitchen and get bombarded by. Hey, dude, I'm in the kitchen. You wouldn't know it, but I'm in. The <laughs> my refrigerator's right here. My washer and dryer's <laughs> right there. <laughs> like I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll stick around in the kitchen for a little there bit longer. Then. I mean, and my wine's I mean, right yeah, here, I mean, very close. No. And my trash can's right behind me, and I'll my sometimes trash cans I'll, over I'll there. <laughs> sometimes I'll sit here and I'll just, you know, toss it back, and I'll just go right hey. in the trash can, and they'll be like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm just playing toss the beer can," you know. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but uh, I do want to ask. The other day. Uh, you were on another show with uh, with uh, two women, and the the drink <laughs> food, the drinking was the uh, peanut butter whiskey. How do you, how uh, how do you like that? How do you like the the whiskey? Uh, peanut butter whiskey is my favorite. I've uh, I've had it a couple of times, and uh, in all honesty, I've uh, wanted to find uh, some type of like uh, jelly uh, whiskey and mix it together. There, let me. You know what? Let me let me look something up real quick. Because I think there is, um, there is a 
Moonshine Whiskey Company here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost positive they make that. Yeah, okay. There, There is... Look, you can fucking door dash it. <laughs> there is peanut. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly whiskey moonshine. It's out oh, there. Gosh. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. I mean, you, that's you, what I you eat can for get it delivered every day. You can get it delivered to your door. See, see now you know this is my sick mind. I would make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and dip it in there. No, nice. my freaking genius! Don't like I. I'm the same way. I am the same way. See, so man, here, here's what I should do. I should have uh, the show I did the other night. Two girls and their alcohol. Do a show with you guys, and you guys can all drink together. <laughs> hey, that'd be awesome. I don't know what the hell we would talk about, but <laughs> who gives a shit? It's the first and last hit. Bring them in on the hit lounge tomorrow night. There we go. Oh, it's set it, it up and we'll knock them down. I mean, hey, it, you know, but I had something I was going to say, and uh, it, it did slip my mind, but uh. No, it's just we are so grateful that you have taken time to come and chill with us and, and and also just maintain the friendship and staying in contact with us. It, it means a lot to us. You're one of the most humble people that I've, I've come across. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, look, I love you guys. We love you too. I, I, I know you guys – like. I feel bad. Like you try to get me to come on a lot, and number one, my my schedule is just fucking insane. It really is. I I literally work between my normal day job, my me and my fiance Coco. We have a a reselling business, so I'll go work eight to twelve hours a day at my day job. Come home and then working on that, and then also trying to do interviews and my YouTube channel, and we have a YouTube channel. It just it's in fucking sane. So whenever I can, you know, I will gladly come on and hang out and drink some cocktails and shoot the shit and curse and lend my opinion on situations. But I have to ask you, and I did kind of a headache here for a minute because I and I've noticed this kind of throughout the night. You're wearing an eagle shirt. How about them eagles this past uh, season, huh? Eagles are my favorite team, man. Um, fucking collapse and crumble this year. The, I, I I can honestly say. I was devastated the way this, like, this season, it, like, it fucked me up. It really fucked me up. Like, I literally, it, you know what was bad? The When the season ended, we got hit with a snowstorm here in Nashville. And when it when it snows in Nashville, that's it. Like, you're done. The city shuts down. They don't have plow trucks. They don't do no, You're, like, fucking stranded in your house. I literally sat here for two, three days because I because I had no work that week because of the snow. I sat here staring at YouTube, <laughs> watching for 12 hours a day, Eagles, interviews, and news. I was like I, I was speech I like I couldn't even talk. I was so fucking fucked up from it. I couldn't believe what happened and how that season ended. We and, heard a lot on Facebook from you. Uh, boy, you really love it out there, didn't you? Oh, man. And, I'm, I, and still, yeah, he hasn't announced yet. I can't see Jason Kelsey retiring. I, 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 a guy like that, I could not end my career on a note like that. No. I'm sorry. I, no. You, you, so, babe, I, we have a 
we, we, Go ahead. We, I apologize. Uh, we have a question here uh, asking, Jer how are you even awake? Jeremy, I have no fucking idea. I've been up since 4.30 this morning. <laughs> yeah. Same. Same. I, I, you know what? I, I, I was actually going to post on Facebook. This morning. I was laying in bed. I was going to post Facebook every fucking morning. I either wake up at three thirty or four thirty to go pee, and then I'm boop, I'm wide awake, and I'm fucking laying in bed. And at about six o'clock, I'll start falling back to sleep. But I got to be up. I got to get up at like six fifteen. So, like, I've been up since four thirty. It's, it, you know, with, with her, it seems like I don't get very much sleep. Between her and my dog, for the love of God, I love my dog to death. But if, she, if it's like, if it's not one, it's the other. I get her sleeping. Yeah. And, then, and then he runs up. Oh, time to go potty. I got to go out. I got to go out. I got to go out. Uh, can, okay, so we got another one here. Misha uh, knows. Misha fucking knows. No, yep, it's... Uh, you go back to sleep, then my alarm goes off at seven. You know, it, it, it's almost like your body knows when. I, I, I want to let's uh, let's thank. Look, these two people. I don't know if anybody else is hanging out with us, but these two are fucking hanging strong, and I hope they're having some cocktails or something during this uh, <laughs> insanity. I mean, I think they're hanging strong during all this. Dude, this has been the longest I think we've been on. I think in two and a half hours. Well, this is the like, the, like I said, this is the most fun that we that we have is when we're doing our show. It could be me and Andrew by ourselves, and we could just be like talking about a subject, and we're just like cracking up. And people have uh, pop on here. We we had one person pop in from China. Really? At the very end, it was like, oh, okay. See, it's a vibe. I like yes, and and thank you. you know, it's, uh... Let let me, let me ask you guys this because when I did your show last time, which was when was that? December, November? Last, last year, year, sometime. Okay, was, was we were we were not live, and it was just audio. So how do you guys yeah. now like doing video and being live? I love I love it. Yeah, I love it. And we made pod uh, news. You did who? We we made pod. Uh, was it pod news? Is yeah, it? Pod it's, a, it's, it's a podcasting news website uh, for, um, I guess, uh, like amateur podcast or amateur YouTube shows. They look every every show out there is amateur unless you're a big name fucking celebrity with a podcast. Oh yeah. I mean, and now, like, our, our show is on literally every single platform you could think of. And we were actually going over it, what was it, a couple weeks ago or something, uh, all the different platforms uh, that we're available on. And it's just like, wow. You know? And, and, and you, you know what? It, it's, like, it's very fucking cool. And I yeah. used to do that. And then I and now my outlook is and please do not I don't know if it's the right or wrong answer, but my opinion on, for myself is fuck all that. <laughs> like like I'm 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 YouTube and that's it. That's where I do my show. And I also now do an occasional pop up on my Facebook, a one on one thing with with the people in there that they can come on live and hang out with me, but. Because I, I, it used to drive me insane because I was on all these, like, ten different platforms. And it's like, well, where do you tell people to follow you? Like, you're sharing out fucking all these different links. It's, like, too fucking much. You know, do, you I mean, a, do you have a website or no? Do I have No. I used to. When, when I, I used to do a show called Totally Driven Radio. And I did that for eight. I did it eight years. We were live every Thursday night. We were live for three to four hours. We did like 350 episodes. And that, then I was, that's when I went through my divorce and everything. And I had to put the brakes on everything for a minute. And when we restarted, was in the middle of the pandemic. And we were doing this style now, which was a dream come true. It's which we always wanted to do. But 
our show was it was me and my co-host Nick Wilkinson, and we would have conversation and banter like we're doing tonight, everyday mm-hmm. conversation, and then we would have an interview. I would schedule three interviews a week, an hour interview. So we would do an interview at eight, nine, and ten, and we would talk in between the interviews for 15, 20 minutes. Um, and then usually an hour after the last interview, we would discuss it, stuff. So we would do all that, but Nick never, during the interviews, Nick never talked. He would always just let me handle the interviews, and he would just, it, unless it was somebody involved with television, because that was his, his like uh, expertise. So mm-hmm. when we came here live and started doing these interviews, it would be me, Nick, and the guest, and you would just see Nick sitting here like this. And it just it, it huh. looks stupid. So I was like, and I said to him, I said, look, Nick, no offense, but um, it's it's not totally your radio no more. It's, well, first off, we're not on radio. You know, we're not audio. We're fucking video now. And it, it's just me. I'm the only one talking, so. You know, it's, uh, it, but it, here's the thing, like, we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for the people who tune in and support us and things like that. And it's, Absolutely. you know, no, no matter how big you, your name gets, no matter uh, how far you succeed, don't forget where you came from. And staying yeah. humble is, is going to get you a lot further. And, and I'm going to go back to Brock Lesnar. You know, he's he's another one that said it best. Is you know, uh, you know, you. How I, I, I'm going to par, par, paraphrase it. You know, you uh, come from nothing, and you know you start making all this money. It's very easy to go back to nothing. So, you know, I, I can see. Uh, I, 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 me personally, I can see how, you know, you know, the big lights and all the money and all the face, I can see how it can easily go to your head very quick. At the same time, if you just stay humble and, and you remember where you came from, you'll be all right. But Bay, I do want to give you one piece of advice, if you don't mind for your channels. Uh, when you, when you tell people to come in and, you know, drop a comment in the chat, please make sure that they uh, actually uh, uh. into the chat and not yell at their phones or their computers and say, hi, how you doing? Uh, because they're not going to be able to see their comment. And so my mom was, my mom and my stepdad were watching the show. And me, you know, of course, you know, up there, you know, we did the numbers of, you know, how many people are watching and stuff. And uh, Cameron says, uh, hey, you know, anybody who's watching, you know, say hi, you know, drop a comment in the chat. So we're waiting. We don't get nothing. And I knew who was watching. I throw my mom up on the phone I'm like, hey, uh, says, um, you didn't say hi or anything. Said, well, yeah, we're saying hi. Like, well, it's not coming through. I'm like, uh, she's like, well, yeah, you don't hear us. And I'm like, and of course, I had it on mute. So I paused for a minute and I unmute the mic. So, so now she's live. She don't know it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I said, did you say that, uh, You've been you you commenting and you're saying hi, but we can't hear you. She's like, well, yeah. I'm like, wait, wait. What what are you doing? She's like, well, you said to say hi and you know drop a comment in chat. So you know, Billy and I are sitting here, you know, yelling hi, how you doing at the TV, and you guys can't hear us. And and, and when you play back the episode, Cameron and I are laughing our asses off for t- at least a solid ten minutes. I'm like. Well, no shit. It's because you're saying hi. Like we can't read. We can't read what you're saying because you're yelling. We, we can't hear your. We can't see your verbal words. We can just yell into the device and think that we're going to be able to see it. We. I mean, I played it back for my wife, and she just lost. That's her shit. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. They, they, and here's the thing. I'm kind of ashamed of it. It's what are you not, ashamed of? I mean, it, because it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed in a funny way because this isn't scripted. This isn't something that's pre-planned. That is her in real life. My my life is uh, both of our lives are very much animate, uh, animated, 
to the point where people think that we make this shit up. And trust me, we don't. I, I, I've gotten, bless my mom's heart. Uh, I, I sent her a, a, a sentence that didn't make sense. And, uh, and, and it was Mike who she's Harry. And so, so I have her read it. I have Karen on there and, and she's reading it. And she's like, Mike who she's Harry. We start oh, laughing. Yeah. We, we, we start laughing. And, and she's saying this. And she's like, I don't understand. I'm like, say it a little bit faster. She's like, my coochie's hairy. And, and we're, we're, we're dying. We can't breathe at this point. And, and what makes it worse is she must have went on for a solid, you know, three to four minutes. My coochie's hairy. My coochie's hairy. My coochie's I'm like. <laughs> Why did you not video this? That would have, like, put your channel over. It's one of those things because we didn't. Number one, we didn't. We thought she would have at least caught on. And this was before uh, you know, being on record where she was, you know, screaming into the the phone, thinking we're going to see her comment. We, we didn't think that she would be that um, that smart to to just. She, and, and it makes it worse because she says, well, I, "I'm glad I can make your guys this afternoon." I don't know what's so funny. I said. You're you're telling us that your coochie is hairy. She's like, well, that's what it says. I'm like, Mom, do you not understand what she's saying? Finally, she's like, you're an asshole. I'm like, well, yeah, I gathered that. Tell me something I don't know. But it's just, I am so dumbfounded at times, Bay, with the interactions I have with people. Our friend Amanda. Her daughter, who is either 18 or turning 18, graduating next year, drove her mom, drove her mom to the, uh, back from the doctors, pull up to the gas station, and she sees the uh, yellow bag over the pumps, you know, out of order, not working. She says, with, with the most serious expression, she says to Amanda, Oh, you know, that's real nice of them to, uh, they put the bag over the pump so the pumps will stay dry. And Amanda says, uh, okay. Well, yeah, exact words too. And she, uh, you know, the, the bag says that, uh, and she, she was just so dumbfounded and she lost it. She's like, do you not see where it says, uh, out of order, not working? She's like, well, no, mom, I didn't see that. And it's because it, you know, the, I just noticed the bag. It looked like little rain jackets. And she, <laughs> she's like, she says, Andy, he said like fucking rain jackets. I, I can't with myself. This is my daughter. She's eighteen and she's she's graduating next year. I, I I I I don't know what to say. So she called she called her son and says to her son, um. I forget which one, but tells your son, yeah, uh, like when you move out and you get your own home, make sure you have a – later on in life, make sure you have a room for your sister. When I when I die, make sure you have a room for your sister. Because it's one of those things like, you know, bless her heart. But if, if you're going into you know, driving like that, I would be petrified uh, to, to drive with you. I just – I mean, in that conversation, I I must have I must have been not able to breathe for at least a solid five minutes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not one to uh, um, like people's stupidity, but there's a difference between like stupid, stupid, and then funny, stupid. Yeah, oh, totally, totally. I just I I can't. It's like when you think you've seen it all and you've heard it all, shit like this comes about. It makes you even more dumbfounded than than you've ever thought to exist. Exactly. I just I, I can't be. I mean, have you had those people? Uh, of course. You really, how do you how do you, how do you deal, how do you deal with it? You laugh. Uh, but but that I'm an asshole for for preying upon that and because well. it, I mean once I realize that your intelligence is not there. I will go out of my way just to get a laugh like that. Um, does that make me a bad person? Be honest with me. I, I got tough skin. Eh, no. Right. Yes and no. Yes and no. 
it's a, it's a very fine line. It, it matter it matters on what you're trying to draw out of their. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I see your point. The line is very thin, but it's also very much blurred at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. How about this? Let's see if anybody is still out there. If they have any questions and. Do you have any questions? We will answer some questions. Otherwise, why don't we wrap it up? Yeah, I'm actually surprised. We're going on almost three hours. Bay, I apologize yeah. for keeping you this long. No, it's yeah. all right. I'm like sitting here hanging out with you guys, having fun, drinking, and Cameron's sleeping good tonight, that's for sure. I'm surprised he's not sleeping yet. yet. I'm, I'm surprised <clears throat> he is passed out in, uh, on the morning. <clears throat> All right, guys, any questions before we wrap up here? Give me a few more minutes. And yeah, who's out there? It, 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 ask now or forever hold your peace. Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank you, Misha. Yep. No questions. Okay. We'll just, uh, I guess we'll move on. Next Saturday. I won't come be check here. Out, come I check won't. out that. Uh, our new YouTube channel. The first and last hit news. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, Thank you, uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, um, and, and the, the news, we're looking forward to that. We're not going to... Uh, go to your major news stations and channels and just break down word for word what is said. We're going to actually bring you major global topics, maybe you know whatever comes across, and even the stuff that you don't hear about uh, on cable television. It's going to be original. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't something, be good that. something where you hear first and last uh, at the first and last hit news. So please tune into that, and uh, you know, I mean. Similar to, uh, we'll have the chat open for anybody who wants to either call in or drop a comment in the chat as long as you use your keyboard and you decide to uh, type it out rather than yell at your device. Misha, thank you. Uh, can't wait to have you tune in and check us out. Um, on that note, is there anything else before we uh, finish up? Uh, hey, everybody, make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure you go to my YouTube channel and my Facebook, Chubby Dudley Official. Go to both, subscribe, follow, throw me a like, throw me a holler, ring bells, get all notifications, hang out, enjoy some fun, and then I'll be back here on the first and last podcast, first, last, first and last hit podcast. At some point in the near future, to have some more wine with my guys. Channel. Also, go subscribe to his channel. Go hit that little uh, ringy dingy bell thingy on the bottom here. Thank you, Misha. Uh, Misha, thank you. Uh, also, if anybody who's watching and uh, ends up uh, watching over, let me say this. I mean. Be, I mean, this is very, this is very, very important right here. Okay, so Misha's been hanging out with us for fucking over two hours, right? Almost three, yeah. I I hung out with you guys for three hours. I've had a fucking ball. We've had some great fun conversations, enjoying some wine. Cameron's over there, his little shit face, but he's having fun. <laughs> We're all having fun. We're having a good time. And the fact that I got one person new to my Facebook and now my YouTube is amazing and worth it. Besides, you know, that's the, like the icing on the fucking cake. Hanging out with you guys, I got my cake, but now I got my icing too. Thanks to Misha. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Again, go check out uh, Bay's channel and, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, notify yourself to his channel. Also, same thing down there. And uh, we love and appreciate you guys. Um, now, I'll be, as we finish off the show, we got to throw it up there. And uh, oh, 
that too sweet there. And, and uh, uh, it now, it ain't tasty. Have to, uh, too sweet your arse on out of here. And uh, we'll catch you next time, brother. Boom. Thanks, guys. We love y'all. Stay safe. Be good. Catch you on down. The love road. everyone. Appreciate it again, Bay. And uh, we'll talk Appreciate to y'all soon. Guys. Absolutely. Stay in touch. Right. Later. Later. Bye, guys. Hit end. Hit end. You're just fucking laughing. <laughs> Hit end. <laughs>